So every, for everyone who's um, here from the public, before we get started, some of you, your names are not necessarily associated with a particular application. So if you need to speak on an application, um, you're probably going to have to put your picture up and wave to get our attention so we know to take you off microphone because you need to participate. Or you can do that little um, raise hand um, icon that is at the bottom of your screen if you bring your cursor to the bottom of the screen. So with that, because we don't have everyone's mics open during the meeting until we reach your application generally. So Kim, if you want to make your required statement, we'll get on, get underway. This meeting, this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 23rd, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act upon it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, and in rare cases, we may deny it. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inlands, wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your work. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh Legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking a certificates of appropriateness. Application 6003-21, Dennis Walter, seeking to remove aluminum siding on the home to expose original clapboard siding, also reduce chimney on the right side of home to meet code slash restore to original at 326 Hartford Ave. Application 6004-21, Tesla Energy Operations seeking to install 32 roof mounted solar panels on rear facing garage roof at 89 Garden Street. Application 6005 21, John and Patricia Ferentino seeking to construct a one story 798 square foot addition on rear of home, relocate front door to the left and construct new front entryway, replace windows with Harvey Tribute double hung windows and change existing siding to ply gem mastic carved wood and cedar discovery siding in white color, remove existing shed and rear corner of yard and replace with a 10 by 16 Carter Farms cottage style shed at 35 Oldham Road. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weatherfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on the application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address uh, in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield. CT this eighth day of February, 2021. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Turning to application 6000-21, Dennis Walter at 326 Hartford Avenue. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to start off just by saying thank you for all your time that you put into the Historical Commission. Um, am I allowed to share a screen for pictures? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna share I'm my- just, I, Yeah, I just found out how to do it from IT, so you should be able to, thank you. Okay, um, the first application is just removing all the aluminum siding. Um, hopefully that's self-explanatory. Um, 
I would be including removing everything, including all the, the outcroppings on, on all sides um, under the porch, everywhere there's aluminum siding and going back to the natural wood. Uh, any questions on that? Nope, we're pretty excited about it though. And we love the old picture. <laughs> Thanks for bringing them along. So the second part is the chimney. Um, what the genesis of this is, is I've had leaks in the, in the basement for years when it rains. Um, you know, I've just cleaned up a mess and now it's starting on the first floor. Uh, this picture came by uh, way of uh, Lee Standish, who's, I believe, the grand his grandfather built the house. I don't know the date of this picture, um, so I can't give you that, but you can tell from the clothes that it's certainly before 1950 anyway. Um, and what I would point you to, besides all the trees in the way, is the side here where the chimney, I am talking about the right chimney, um, for those of you who know where I live, um, the bill, this is Billy and Jack's side, which is the south side of the house. You can clearly see here, the siding goes all the way to the, to the bump out. There's no blockage of chimney um, of the view of the window. So apparently, I've always wondered about this chimney because uh, going to the next picture, you can see up here um, a couple design challenges. One, this port, can you all see my mouse just so you know where I'm pointing? Okay. Yeah. So this portion of the roof, there's no gap between the chimney and the roof. So all the water coming off of here and coming off of here goes up behind the chimney. There's not a great cricket behind there. I'm not even sure because two roofs meet at the chimney that a cricket could be designed in, um, that would do it. The other challenge or several of the challenges, one is the, the uh, mortar in between is pretty old and it, and it certainly needs to be um, fixed. I've had a couple um, people who have actually given me, well, one has given me a quote, one wanted to find out what would happen tonight. Uh, there is a slight tilt towards the roof. Uh, one person said, a mason said that if you repoint, you might be challenged repointing up here because it's already got a slight tilt to it. Mark, if you want to shine a spotlight, you could probably see it. Um, so certainly the, uh, I had a, a quote from Chimney, uh, I forgot what the, the brand is, and I could buy a price of a nice car for what they wanted to do was tear it down and rebuild it back up. The other design flaw that I, you know, there may be another house in Wethersfield or Old Wethersfield, but I've yet to find it. And I'll provide a close up is where you see the stairs, the stepping here. So obviously anybody who has a house knows that where there's a horizontal uh, or yeah, I guess a horizontal piece that's, you know, even with flashing, eventually that gives way. Um, so that's always a challenge for water. Uh, these are just some close-ups. Unfortunately, I have a tree in front of it, so it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see the roof here, um, you know, going behind the chimney. I did this summer, uh, I don't know why my, uh, I guess this picture here would be the picture to look at. So this summer, if, uh, let me zoom in a little bit, um, you can kind of see a line here. So this is clabber down here. I took the loom siding off. This was all rotted. I had to refinish some of the window sill and the window frame. Uh, because this, the water you know, would, would come down here and just, it would rot away at the wood. And I, and I think this rot, while it was still wet now and the inside it stained, you know, the outside, I think they put the aluminum siding right over the rotted wood. Um, so this is all rebuilt up and everything underneath here. So uh, the application calls for a change to the chimney. Um, I think chimneys these days aren't really needed anymore. You can direct vent if you really want a chimney. So the three options that I request are one is just to take the chimney down and go back to the way the original structure was without the chimney. Uh, I would leave the inside fireplaces. Um, number two would be to take this down. I think this is way above code, the height and the size. So I would want to, you know, take this down and, and make it smaller to something that, you know, would still have design features, but would, it doesn't need to be this large. And obviously the third option is to take it down and, and have it rebuilt the way it is. Although I just, I'm, I'm frightful of that because we're going to continue to have problems with the water buildup behind. So. Um, with that, that's my discussion. Is there any questions? And so your first preference is to take it down entirely? Uh, I believe so. 
Uh, Dennis, there's to... another chimney on the other side, correct? Or no? Yep. Yeah, there's another chimney which you can, well, I don't know which picture is best, but you can kind of see the top here. This is going to get repointed. Uh, it does need to be repointed. It's capped. This is where the boiler came out, but now with the uh, super efficient boiler that I have, it's just direct vented out and it's no longer needed. And this one's clearly not original to the house as all the pictures show, and you'll really gain a better view of that pretty bump out yep. without the chimney, in my opinion. Yeah, so you have, this is kind of, this view, sorry, let me slide this over. This is kind of a replication of the view of the old house. Um, you know, just mon this is this is recent picture. With the 1915 hoodie, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Laurie would appreciate that. <laughs> it was cold that day. I do. So I do really appreciate all the extra pictures too um, and your ability to show them to us by sharing your screen. Does anyone have any other questions for Dennis? Uh -huh. So my, my only question is not really pertinent to the district decision, but uh, is there going to be any issue for you or possibly for a future owner just wrapping their heads around a, a non-functional fireplace? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that's really a personal choice. I've been here 25 years. Uh, I think there was a time when we used the, the fireplace a couple times a year. So, I mean, in 25 years I've been here, I've, I've used it less than a dozen times. Um, uh, you know, so I, I don't know what the answer to that is. I don't need a chimney. You can easily put a gas fireplace in with a direct vent. Um, you'll have a little bit of a, obviously a little bit of a vent sticking out of the house here, but um, you certainly could do that if somebody really wants a fireplace. No, it just the house was probably built. Well, well, we know the house was built without it, and there was probably no fireplace there whatsoever. Right. And what architectural elements were there before they put the fireplace in? Inside or outside? Inside. Inside. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'd be happy to show anybody the basement. It is a massive brownstone fireplace um that i've never used i don't um you know because there's water damage I, it just it, it there's no reason to have for me there's no reason to have a fireplace in the basement um i don't know what the purpose served it was used you can see the dark uh the ash burns or whatever you want to call it um it was used at one point in the past but you know right now it's just a basement i, I was just curious thank you yep thanks very much does anyone else have any questions Hearing none, thank you very much, um, Dennis. And we will move on to application 6004-21, Tesla Energy on 89 Garden. Jennifer, we have a um, public comment on- um... We do, and I have a note to myself and I still neglected to read it. Um, before we move on, and I will entertain other public comments as well, I do have a letter. It is from um, Stephen and Sheila Wells, 336 Hartford Avenue. Uh, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, we would like to add our support to the application submitted by Dennis Walter. The decades old siding has not held up well, and it would be an improvement to the neighborhood to have the wooden siding restored. Signed Stephen and Sheila Wells, 336 Hartford Avenue. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, returning to 6004 21 Tesla Energy at 89 Garden. Good evening. It's Lindita from Tesla Energy. Do you hear me? Yeah, can you give us your um, name and business address for the record, please? Uh, yes, it's Tesla Energy, um, 714 Brook Street, Suite 150, Rocky Hill, Connecticut, 06067. And you're Lindita Donahue? Correct, yes. Because okay. we, can, we can see your name, but not your picture. Okay, what do you have for us tonight? Um, actually, I can open my camera. I'm in the office. Um, is, so, the owner, is the homeowner here as well? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think she is on. Yeah. Um, I know you guys have the plans. I know I send everything to Kim. Um, I can actually share my screen. It's the same plans that I gave to her with the pictures and everything. Um, 
So we did we did make another modification and we heard you guys when you said that you didn't want everything um, in the front on the garage side. So we moved all the panels in the back, in the rear view. I also had the master electrician and I went there for a side view. He was able to locate where the main panel is, the meter and everything. Um, and he said that we can run the conduit internally without you know, being visible from the street. However, um, it's going to go around the edges, like the ridges, and it's gonna be painted black, which is like how the, um, the roof originally is, which is not gonna be visible. So, and we actually removed the meter, whatever the disconnect next to the meter. So we just let, let the AC, which is like required by uh, the fire marshals. And that's a small one. It's um, pointed, actually, I'm gonna share my screen. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. So right here. So it's this one here, it's really small. Um, and then, right, this is another picture of how the panels are gonna look like and where they are located. And then right here underneath, we're gonna run the conduit and it's going to be black. So that's all. Nothing It's going to be visible from this other street over here. Uh, yeah. Is the size of the box that you've drawn in, is that to scale? Is that the actual size relative to the electric meter? Yes, it's like exactly, yeah, with the electric meter, yes. And actually, by I mean, the bushes is right there, which is going to cover it, and it's not going to be visible. But yes, to and that point. The it's, connection to that turnoff will be from the interior. It's running somewhere. Right, right. The big inverters that you guys see here, the big ones are going to go inside the basement. Yes. Yeah. And can you just um, outline for us a little more clearly? I'm just having a little bit of trouble following where the conduit is going. Oh, so it's gonna come, so, oh, hold on, let me, actually, um, I have the pictures. Can you see these pictures for me yeah. or no? Yeah. Okay, so that's why it's gonna come right under here. It's gonna go like small way and then it's gonna go the, under that and it's gonna come to this one right under here. Everything is going to be painted and then it's gonna go all the way to the top. So that's why it's not going to be visible because it's just going to be next to the edges and everything. So. And then where does it go into the interior of the house? Oh the yeah, it's it's like a it's a basement down there, and then you just run the conduit, and then everything is like inside. So the conduit will run down inside of the house there. <clears throat> right, but it's going to be painted white mm -hmm. so that you can come, you know, out from the from the basement all the way. Yes, to go to the roof. Yes, so and then we'll hide it. Wherever yeah. it is, it's going to be painted to match its yes. background. So, of it's course, as much yeah, as definitely. Yeah, the aesthetic is like important to us as well. So. And the panels, just to be clear on the record, have no pattern mm -hmm. or design in them. They're not no, no, no. They're going to be just, yeah, completely. And they're going to go right straight on the roof. Like, that's why I actually provided those pictures because they're from a website and we have those panels. Tesla has them that they don't need any, um, like, standing and stuff around. Or, you know, how they mount them um, higher up now. But no, ours goes like flat. So it's more uniform, I, I think, in my opinion at least but yeah does anyone else have any questions for the applicants i can ask about the uh the conduit itself there was no thought to go because that wall in the back of the garage is fairly close to the ground it's, it's, yes. and not to go straight down and then trench and come in because you are going underneath into the basement at some point in front of the ac condenser there there's right. no thought because i mean you're I like how you say blending. Uh, is it going to be a galvanized <laughs> pipe painted black, and then it's going to be a PVC pipe coming down the side of the house? You know, it, it's a long way. That's one of my 
you, know, you have such a neat, uh, clean look. Yeah, no, I how understand. How she just yes. talked about, and then what had that been talked about? Um, it was, and that's why I actually got the master electrician involved, and he couldn't. Um, I think because of the main panel, like the one, everything is located in the basement. It's not, and it's not located in the garage, which would have been really easy for no, us. No, you're, you're missed, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you, I maybe I didn't explain it correctly. So you, you're taking the conduit mm -hmm. to go across midway to the back of the house to go in, enter the basement to get to the panel. So mm -hmm. I'm asking, instead of coming over the top surfaces of the roof okay. and yeah. the siding of the house, can you not come straight down where? Because again, that's a severe slope pretty close to the ground you can't run a conduit down and then trench it is it because it's so close to the neighbors not a setback or was that explored um yes and it is actually it's go you're right it's it's going to require a big trench and i'm thinking it's going to be under the hmm, it's going to be like on the front side of the house then we can do that because it's like really no, 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 in no, the no. Entrance. i guess uh, we're missing the, we're not touching okay. base here either so, if you go to your uh, pictures that you showed where that conduit's yeah. going to run off, mm -hmm. it looks like it's fairly high up about in the middle of where your panels are on your garage roof or maybe down okay. the last row. Okay. So if you were to run that conduit, continue back, see where you're, yeah, where you get your hand there. Okay. And the conduit goes straight down to the ground. That's maybe what, eight feet off the ground. Uh, and then you trench from there to get okay. to your basement. So there, you don't have that conduit coming down the side of the house across the, Got you. the eaves okay. there. Was that, thought, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, a trench has to be, has to be the right, but to me that right. alleviates or really leaves the minor. Uh, you're gonna see the conduit, but mm -hmm. only about a quarter of it. Right. I mean, I, honestly, I don't know if it was like an avenue that was, um, proposed by my master electrician but I can definitely run by him and if you guys you know make that as a requirement then we will accommodate it but yeah I guess what I'm wondering is why it couldn't have gone into the house sooner and through the basement and maybe the homeowner can answer that for us I mean, what I can tell you is that we did spend about an hour with the electrician scoping out the site, going through the basement, going around the house. And this is what he thought would be the least disruptive, um, both to, you know, the grounds, um, the house and the least visible. Um, I mean, there are some challenges. We do have a long skinny house. So by cutting across the basement, it actually was a, a, a shorter distance to run. If you know what I mean, across Jennifer, the, those additions on a slab, obviously the garage is, is that breezeway? Is that a slab too? Is that what one reason why? It might be. So what we've got, if you look at the house, um, the first, see how it's sort of four sections. So if we're looking at her screen, the top right, and then the second part in are the original house. So you have a two story central chimney, federal era house that had a summer kitchen so, um, which is the small extension. And then in 2001, the previous owners built a large extension, which is a little breezeway and then a large garage with an in-law suite over it. So that's sort of half and half in terms of when it was built. Um, Does the country kitchen have a full basement underneath it? Yes, the summer kitchen has a, a full basement underneath it. So the basement actually runs, if you can actually see where Lindita has her little cursor right now, you can actually, oops, yeah, that's where you access the basement at the moment. And it, it, it must be a slab. The yeah. ceiling yeah. In, is, the, is a dirt floor basement. I guess, so my question is, instead of running the conduit all the way up to the front section of the house, dropping it down into the basement there, why not drop it down sooner? Um, I think partly because there is a way to get it out through a small basement window right now, which is quite inobtrusive. So he doesn't want to interfere with the actual original brick foundation of the house. Um, so it's a little hard to see here, but um, yeah, right about there, there's a small window and he's going to use that uh, right next to it to run the conduit out, which is, which is quite small. I have the pictures here. Like
And so using, just to be clear again, you, on the picture we're on now, using the hand, can you show me where it's running? Right here. I mean, from the panels mm. where it runs. Well, the all oh, the panels are right here. Right, and so. So it's going to be. It's right, right yeah, here. there. Yeah. It's going yeah. to come up the side of the it's house. Good. Yeah. And that view is, it's going to be blended in because it's going to be painted white. And that view is also obscured. You can actually see, if you just slide over a little bit, you see our background? Yep. That's a picture of our house. Mm -hmm. There's actually a small shed there as well, which was built with the Historic Commission's approval. It's going to be partly obscured by that. So it's just gonna be a thin white tube really running up the side of the house. And then it's gonna go across and then up to the main um, mm -hmm. roof. So everything is going to be concealed and blended in. I really don't think you'll see it. I was uh, interested in the color. You just mentioned uh, white, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole thing is not black. It's just part of it that is. And it's the part that uh, is against the white siding will be white. Correct. So the panels themselves are, are black. Um, our roof is a very dark gray. We think it's going to be almost indistinguishable. Everything else that's metal or PVC can be painted to match. So the bits that go up against the white siding will be painted white. The bit that runs along the roof line will be painted black. I'm trying to figure out, so is it running across the roof line in the breezeway section on the side of the ridge or on the side of down at the end of the roof? Where is that part running? Actually, Jen, if you look at picture at page 31 of our application. Starts there and continues, right? Okay. Page 31, 32. Yep. But it doesn't, that really doesn't show us if it's going to be, that's the black one laying across the roof, or is it going to be under the ridge painted white on both of those sections? Well, I would assume that the stuff going across the roof would be black and the stuff yeah. against the clapboards would be white. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yep. And then that, that you'll definitely see those what painted or not. So that's why. I was asking if they can come right off the edge of the garage there, the painting, the picture they have now go down, you know, mm -hmm. the black, then the white down, just the eight feet, trench it all the way over. But I guess they I would, look at that. I, I would have to say that I'm intrigued by what um, is being discussed here because there are times when trenches initially feel like more work, but uh, really, hide a lot of, of issues. And uh, you know, if the homeowner has, uh, takes an interest in, in what Chris is describing, uh, you know, I, I realize that you have to get a trench around a shed, you're trenching a, in a side yard, uh, but it, if it means that you can really unclutter the uh, siding, there's something to be said for that. On the other hand, if this is a side of the house where there's a lot of utility action anyway, um, you know, maybe painting to match works. I think that the hard part that we're having is this description of conduit that's painted black. Like, is this sitting on top of black shingles or sitting next to black shingles? So I, I can't really show you. Um... Lindita, can you point it out maybe? Um, well, um, it's, it's, it's going to be, so the part that it, go, it comes from the basement all the way up, it's uh, actually is gonna be next to the house, you know, completely attached to it. And then it's gonna go underneath. So, so basically we're, try, we're gonna try to hide it as much as we can and that's, paint it. That's not answering the question of where the black is going to be though. We, we got the white part, we get that. Where is the black part going to be? The, the top part, on, Only on the top of the roof, just that part. Right at the peak? Yes, I am. If, if it's sitting on top of the shingles, then I can see that painting it black makes sense. If it's yes. sitting on the, on the rake or on the, you know, on, 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 against something that's white, you know, that's no, I... no, no, no. It's going to sit on top. Definitely. No, no, no. It's not going to go like that. Okay. Uh, be between the garage and the summer kitchen, it's got to cross a roof. 
Yeah. Right. Understand. I just, again, uh, I feel more assured about this, having talked about it more. And although I'm in, certainly intrigued by what Chris is talking about, I do think the imposition on the district is minimal enough that I think what he's, the reason he's recommending this is in some ways because he wants to uh, in, lessen the imposition on the homeowner's uh, enjoyment of the house itself. Uh, at least I want to speak for you, Chris, but I think that's where you're af what you're after. But if you've already thought about this uh, conduit being white against white and black only where it's going to be against a dark color already, uh, then maybe it's not going to look as imposing uh, as Chris is thinking. Uh, no, what, I, what I'm thinking, I mean, you, you follow the line. You, I'm going to see this conduit, this guiding conduit, you know, it's going to go. And, and I know there are many homes, like you mentioned, utility, uh, a lot of the piping, what we have you, but you're going to follow, you're going to see that conduit and it's going to lead you right to these panels. Right. To me, the path of least resistance, and we've done that many times when panels are on garages, when they can't get the the hardware in a garage, a detached garage, and they and they uh, do a trench from the house to the garage and into the boxes. And yep. to me, anyone that has power out to their detached garages, they're all trenched uh, for the most part. To me, that's a no brainer. But uh, Chris, again, to Chris. go over and up and over, uh, to me, um, you know, that you're never going to get a clean break over these some of these ridges. You got to cross too. You got to cross that breezeway, get up to the summer kitchen, and then down. Um, but again, uh, I, maybe, maybe they can't do it because it's code, the right, you know, but no one can give us that that answer with the information we have today. I agree with All speculation Chris that when you have a, uh, a a low slope on a roof, as you do here, um, coming way down towards the ground, that to be able to just drop it right there, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. So, um, and and once you dig that trench and get it in the ground, it's never on the side of the house for any subsequent paint jobs or, or anything else. So, um, I think you know, as a question or comment, Jennifer, you've got your hand up. I do. Thank you. Yes. Um, Jennifer Regan. I mean, I am not qualified to comment on whether it's feasible to do the trench option instead, um, because I'm not an electrician or a, a contractor. Um, we are open to it. Um, and if you stipulated that we had to do that if it were up to code and it were feasible, we would certainly be happy to look into that. I can't tell you yes or no whether it's actually allowed. I will say that having looked at, at various solar panels and conduits and having had them on a previous home we had, they're smaller than gutters. And our house has gutters. Um, so I, I think they're, they're, they're less obtrusive than you might expect. I appreciate that input. And, and like I said, I think that um, Chris's idea here is just because it's one of the ones that we would logically think of uh, when we uh, encounter an application like this. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate that the uh, uh, plan that you've come with today uh, is uh, more in keeping or, or at least um, accounts for some of, the, of what you heard uh, before. So uh, I'm grateful for that. I don't know if it's far enough for some members of the commission, but it certainly uh, is heading uh, in uh, a direction that's uh, right in my mind. Thank you. And Doug, I'd like to thank Jennifer, you know, for their flexibility on that. But if you know a lot, a lot of those solar installations we've had in all of this, especially when you get a Hubbard house and you have, you know, a, a two foot rake on some of these, and you know, how do you get that break up and over, over that roof line down to these, you know, to the boxes that you need? And that's a lot of times is our toughest. Sometimes we get them through the attic but a lot we've had, especially when they jump roof lines like this, that's the only way to connect them. It is conduits and we're aware of that. It, it, it is very tiny, maybe, I don't know if they're two inches or what the diameter is, maybe less, but you are adding a new element on a flat roof that you didn't have there before. But um, again, thank you for considering that too. But we spent a lot of time on conduits. Sometimes it seems more so the connecting these panels because the panels are the panels. We these are black, not much silver filament in these as well, that checkerboard pattern. But um, that to me, that, that really is a finishing. That, that's a nice trying to hide it the best we can. Anyone else have any comments or questions? 
Hearing none, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6005-21, the application for 35 Oldham. I don't know if Lindita needs to take her screen share down. I will, sure. I mean, thank you. Yep, that did the trick. Cancel? Cancel it? Okay. Good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Tarantinos are here. There they are. Welcome yes. back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John and Patty Ferrantino, 35 Oldham Road. We also have um, who's joined our contractor, Gene Dijon from Rocky Hill Enterprises. Great. Okay. Thank what do you, you have Marie. for us today? Okay, um, we didn't do the screen share. I'm not sure if Kim, I, we sent her a, a PDF of the package that we sent along with a set of drawings. Would it be they possible have, for her they to have, get them up? Um, they have it on their screens, but I can- Oh, they do. They, they all, they, each of the commissioners have it. So if they want me to bring something up for everyone to see, then I'll bring it up. Okay. Yeah, the, the screen sharing is new tonight, so um, we're testing out our new toy, but um, before we were prohibited from using it for security reasons, but we all have the packet that you provided either okay. in front of us in paper or on another screen that we're looking at. So you can go ahead and refer to it and we should be able to follow along fine. Great. Thank you. Maybe we could just turn um, past the first page to drawing A-0. Um, one of the items that we wanted to do, there's an existing shed in the backyard that um, is in pretty poor condition with the exception of the, the roof that was reshingled a few years ago. Uh, we're looking to replace that with a Clotter Farms uh, cottage storage uh, type building. You'll see there uh, what that looks like. The difference between the picture and it's noted underneath the picture is that uh, um, the door will not have windows nor will it have the panel will be a plain solid door. It will have the black shutters. Um, it's pretty, it's a standard shed from, from Clotter Farms. We plan to put the uh, ramp on the right hand side. So if you're looking down on the property, it'd be, it'd be on the right. Oh, there we go. Okay. <coughs> So that'll give you an idea of um, where the existing shed is and we're planning to replace it basically to the top of the existing location. I'm just, okay. it's a small point, but I'm confused. Looking at the shed, you said the ramp is going to be on the right-hand side to the neighbors? Yes. To the neighbors? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yep. That was. Okay. So if we go on to the um, next drawing, exhibit one, that'll show you the um, existing house uh, photographs as well as the floor plan. And as uh, we explained last time, the, the sunroom, the current sunroom that's off the back, um, right now that was built over, I believe, an existing deck that was in place. Uh, that is settling. Uh, the windows in the sunroom are such that they, they cannot latch. So uh, we are gonna, our plan is, is to, to remove that sunroom and to uh, move the, the hatchway as part of the entire addition project. Um, drawing A1 is just a um, a view looking at the, on the left, the foundation that would be poured. We're planning a, a full foundation underneath the uh, addition. And you'll see the um, hatchway there is, is gonna be on the right in the rear. And then you have a visual of the, 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 the top of the, uh, the roof line and the pitches. Okay. Drawing A2, um, that has not changed from um, 
basically what we had submitted when we did the uh, pre-application, the sizes remaining the same. I think the only difference that is, I think we, we shifted the hatchway slightly over um, towards the end of the house. But other than that, everything else there is, is the same. Now, on drawing A3, this was where there was some discussion last time because we did not have at the time of the pre-application meeting, what the front of the um, house was gonna look like. And I know there was some concerns about moving the um, existing doorway. And you can see in the, the photograph of the existing house right now, it's underneath and to the left of, underneath the gable to the left of those three windows. What we're proposing is to move that doorway to the left, remove the box windows, and center them underneath the peak of the gable. That gable would also be cut back. So it would be, I guess, you'd say along the same plane as the garage gable. Um, so you won't have that overhang um, that it, it exists today. Those will, those will both be along the same, the same plane. And now we have also, we're able to show here the, the <clears throat> proposed front doorway uh, the step there and, and the roof line with the, with the columns. This also has the, the views of the others. The garage door that's shown on the drawings is not the garage door that's there, but we're planning on keeping it because it was brand new. I think it was installed within the last year or two and doesn't need to be replaced. I see our the, uh, the rocking chairs. Yeah, that's for my wife and I are retired now, so hopefully we'll be able to sit out there <laughs> and enjoy ourselves. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, we the windows in the front um, underneath the gable are, are six over one. They'll be black. Um, the there'll be a, a round window up above that. And there's windows, uh, we're replacing the single window on the right of the um, three windows with a set of double windows. The doorway is like a three quarters door and we have a copy of the specification on one of the other pages that basically show what that looks like. And we're also proposing to put in um, half screen windows. We don't want the full screens. We're gonna go with the, uh, the screen just over the uh, the bottom portion of the window. Uh, A4 uh, kind of covers the specifications for the materials we we're gonna use. We're proposing to use the Harvey Tribute window with the black exterior. Um, there's a drawing there for the circle window that would go up above. That would be, comes in white, but it would be uh, painted black. There's also detail there um, around how the trim would be. Uh, we're proposing to use the as, as AZAC trim. Um, the siding, we proposing to, on the front to use the Cedar Discovery um, shingle siding. And then the remainder of the house would be uh, the carved wood 44, the, the slat siding. And it would be in white. Uh, let's see, the door, let me show that. Uh, on the next page on A5, uh, the columns or materials are, are shown there. The uh, front light fixtures, there would be two on the porch and one over the uh, garage itself. And the front steps, um, what we're proposing to do is to put in, uh, these are, this is a view of our front steps in our existing home that we had done with the blue stone on top and then the, uh, the sides were wrapped in um, natural stone. And that's what we're proposing to do here as well. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. We're, um, hope I didn't go through that too fast and we're prepared to try and answer any questions you may have. Nope. We appreciate the detail in the application very much. Um, 
I think the when looking at the material, the question I had was on the new front porch or landing, there's an overhang with columns. What are those columns going to be? That's on the drawing A5, it's called, um, it's, a, called, it's done by a Pacific column, it's called Enduracraft and it's square uh, with some trim that's shown on the top and on the bottom. It's, um, I'm not sure how else I can explain it. I feel like, um, really the material, what it's made of is what I'm most interested in. Uh, I can't read so, very well good. on here. The drawing is no genius. What we need to be Can you <laughs> unmute uh, the contractor? He could speak to that a little bit better than I can. Sure. Gene? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. okay. My name is Eugene D. John from Rock Hill Enterprises, 73 Bucks Crossing, Rocky Hill. Uh, the, the columns are like a composite uh, fiberglass and like a resin, if I'm not mistaken, and it's uh, paintable. Is it a solid material or a hollow material? I think it's hollow. I think they're uh, structural, but I think they're hollow in the center. What I'm concerned about with those is that they're going to have a um, PVC plastic look as opposed to a matte no. look or a painted look. No, it's it's more of a. Um, it's a composite. Yeah, it's more like a uh, the round fiber columns. It's it's not like a shiny PVC. Okay. No. If they're structural, they're going to have to be a fiberglass composite. Correct. PVC can't hold itself up. Right. Co co correct. Okay. Does anyone else have questions for the applicant or the contractor? I do. Uh, those columns, uh, those columns, the do they have a groove that goes halfway down as like an accent? Not Look to them? No, they're smooth. No, they're smooth. It's only the upper and the lower pieces that are, have like a trim on it. That's, um, I mean, I'm looking at uh, drawing uh, that on our, uh, it's page 38 for us. Um, if you look at the columns on page 38, they have like a groove in them in the top half of the column. That was the is, old one, excuse I think that was the old ones that we um, showed you um, during the pre-application. Um, but these are going to be completely solid. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the old one. Yeah, so there we, we had um, sent a drawing into to Kim. I think it was the day after the uh, pre-application meeting. And we did it at one point. We're, look, we're showing like a, what do you call that? Like a raised surface, like on a cat. Almost like a panel. Yes. Yes. We did you know, eliminate that. We're going to go with a solid face. There's okay. not going to be any grooves or anything on it. Actually, if you look at page 44 of our package, it shows a smooth column. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just take a quick look over there. I see it. Yeah. So square smooth. Yes. Uh, yes. I, the uh, there's a detail on this construction that I'm hoping won't be really uh, strong, and it's hard to tell from the drawing, but 
to me, there's nothing that screams more uh, 2020 uh, construction than uh, asphalt shingles sitting on the returns of, uh, of, uh, of houses so that you don't end up with a bird's nest, I guess, or something. Uh, I mean, it's an attempt to try to create a slope. Uh, do you know what I'm referring to here? I'm not sure. I do. I do. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm just hoping that's know. not going to be a uh, really uh, uh, strong uh, feature uh, in the end. Um, we had a situation where uh, a builder actually created a slope that went all the way uh, uh, over what would be those three windows that you see there. Uh, and, and, and it was all asphalt. Uh, and fortunately that was uh, modified and removed. Uh, but again, uh, I know there are a few houses in town where you'll see that has been uh, done, but most uh, homes of the era on Oldham don't really uh, have, a, uh, have that detail. In fact, that, as you can see, that house right now has almost no overhang uh, on its rakes. So that uh, is something that would really scream uh, renovation um, if, if it were really uh, obvious. So I don't know if there's anybody else that uh, has a concern about that or if the builder wants to speak to it, but there you go. Well, the, my question, do you, do you, you don't like the return boots or the returns, or you don't like the, that the rakes overhang or both? Well, I think that this is not a, a bad time to uh, create an extension if you're planning to do this. I mean, the, the, the closest thing that we have to this nearby is on Garden Street. Uh, there's uh, a house there that uh, a ranch that is wrapped in uh, the same kind of siding. And when that work was done, it, it definitely changes the era of the house a bit. And so I'm not saying that you can't add a rake, but I'm just saying that um, if you have highly visible uh, asphalt shingles underneath your rake, I think it's more of a giveaway that uh, okay. This is, uh, you know, Doug. it's more of a giveaway than I'd be comfortable with. Doug. Yes. I, 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 so, so you want a traditional hey, Eugene, hang on one uh, second. Colonial boot there rather than the um, returns. Well, let me uh, let Vatsik speak to this. So, the re you're objecting to the return, Doug. Yes, I. No I mean. I'm not so crazy about the return, but okay. um, and, I, but if there's a return, if there is a return, what would you like it like to see it covered with? Mm, I anything but uh, asphalt shingles. <laughs> PVC. I'm assuming that they're talking about using. Um, uh, Azek on, on those rake boards anyway, am I correct? Yes. Regardless. Yes. I think that should be enough. Well, I don't know how, so how that's you your point is well taken. And because I, when I look at the um, original peak where the original entr entrance was, as it's redone with the return, that doesn't really bother me, but when I look at it repeated over the garage, I agree it gives a more modern facade to the house. The, the, the returns can be eliminated and just make a uh, traditional boot there <clears throat> that won't have any asphalt shingles on it. I think that might be something worth considering. I don't know about the <clears throat> others. It's a small thing, but it's one of the things that I think would help make the house be updated yet still mix in better with the lines that it had and the lines of the other houses nearby. I'm glad the builder is here. I'm glad the others are here. Like I said, I, I'm 
not looking to to direct this myself, but it's one of the things that kind of makes me think uh, it would be best to uh, avoid. White metal flashing. Let me ask you this: If they wanted to stay with the returns and they are covered with, um, like a black metal standing scene, would that be acceptable? Uh, I don't know that that's uh, as good a choice either. Just because it's okay. putting it's putting black in a trim area that's otherwise all white. Okay. Um, what about what no, if it with white? You know, it's it's again. This is a finished detail that you can come back to us on, but uh, it just strikes me as as maybe being. Uh, I, I it'd be interesting to see what it looks like without the returns at all. Uh, part of it is that I like that porch, and I feel like uh, there's a lot going on because you have double columns there, um, and th it may be worth looking at that. Uh, without the four additional returns that you see across the front right now. So just a thought, because you have the porch pretty simple with just a horizontal shed roof by necessity. Right. Okay. This, this says it's a cold white metal flash. Can Tim pull up that house on Garden Street, the Mills house, that the one you were referencing earlier? Is that the one you're talking about? Yes, across from the uh, Sacred Heart Church yes. original. Yep. Which one? That's a longer porch. It's uh, on. It is. It's next yeah. to Carbones. Right across from the church. Church? Wait, on which? Uh, garden. Garden. Uh, garden, sorry. garden across from the old church, or the original yeah. church. Next to Carbone, you know, the. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Hold, oh, I know which one. Okay. Hold on one second. The Mills House. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that we should replicate the look that's there, but- No, but it gives that simplicity this, you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it definitely has, longer. it's definitely uh, when uh, part of the inspiration of this, or part of what I think this house is gonna look like is to a certain extent, a bit like that one. So, but if you look at it, the Mills house has no overhangs at the gable ends. Great. Right. Let's take a look to get on the other page. Thank you. Oh. oh, thank you. That's the garden tree house. Yeah, that's the one we looked at. Yeah, we're familiar with that house. Yeah, but it has no overhangs at the gable ends, which is not what you're proposing. Right. How do you, uh, how does the commissioners uh, feel about uh, extens extensions over versus no rakes. Is that, do you have a feeling about that? Especially when you look at this house on Oldham, the proposed house to the right-hand side and that you don't have those returns. Again, it's not a gable peaked end, but your, your main focus is on, on these two gable pieces with those returns. And it does, as Doug, you mentioned to me, strike you, yeah, as a pretty comprehensive rehab, but not to the period in a sense. So I, I like this cleaner line. I would think that's more appropriate for that street as well. Maybe on where the old one is, where they're moving, centering the three windows, you could probably get away with it there, but maybe not at the garage end is, is to me a little less, uh, more appropriate to that, that era without them. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's a really lovely project. It's going to be, um, you know, a great lifelong home when you make all your changes. It, I, that's the one thing I'm concerned about on the project. A little bit about the round window, but I think that'll probably blend okay when it's painted. I couldn't hear the last part. I'm sorry. I said, I said a little bit about the round window, um, but I think when it's painted dark, it'll blend. Oh, okay. yes, it'll be painted black. Yeah, the okay. there's also, I believe, one down the street on Oldham as well. I think it's on the, the house that was in the cul-de-sac that was done. Mm -hmm. 
Right. What's in the peak in the one now? Is that a louvered uh, vent there now that's existing? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's where that window will go. So. Correct. I think the one in the turnaround actually has a, a, um, a sash or square, uh, a rectangular window as opposed to round. I could be wrong about that. I'm not against the round there uh, since you already have. Uh, I, I just, again, I kind of share the idea that maybe if, especially if you're, if we're talking about maybe abandoning the returns, you know, maybe abandoning the overhang saves you the trouble of the whole thing. Uh, does the builder have a technical reason for wanting to build rakes? It's strictly aesthetics. Okay, great. That's this, the rakes are just the bottom pieces or the, the, the whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. Oh. I gotcha. <clears throat> does anyone else have any other questions for the applicants or the contractor? Hearing none, did we hit on all of your points, Mr. and Mrs. Ferentino? I believe so. Okay, very good. Um, Thank you. I will ask if there's any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Moving on to the public meeting, application 6003-21, Dennis Walter at 326 Hereford Avenue. May I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve as submitted with one stipulation that, uh, like just because I think it's not spelled out in here, that the, uh, the chimney be removed. I'll, I'll second that. that. Oh, Jen, you got Chris, it? Let Chris have that. Thank you. Um, the reason for my motion, um, well, one, very excited that we're going back to uh, the original siding, getting rid of the aluminum. Love to see the original siding on a house. Um, and then, of course, looking at the original pictures of the house where that chimney didn't, you know, wasn't there originally, um, I think it's completely appropriate to restore it back to its original set. I agree. It's, a, it's going to be a great project. We're excited to see it. Anyone else? I agree I just, with that. Oh, sorry, Vasek. We're going to lose the Harvest Gold siding. <laughs> <laughs> An avocado green. I think you could get match, matching paint. Probably. Yeah. Uh, I think that bump out, yeah, it's going to look great. Those old pictures really helped. Absolutely. I, I think that uh, from the outside, it's a no-brainer. I do think that... Uh, from the inside, uh, it's a bit more of a challenge, but that's not our purview, only because it was strange uh, what was constructed, but the, those three fireplaces, um, if there are three, um, uh, will require a bit of reworking uh, there. Uh, but the, from the outside, uh, it's a wonderful project. I'm all in favor. And with that, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved with the stipulation that the chimneys to be removed. Application 6,489 Garden Street. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to table. I'll second. Uh, my reasoning for that is, is obviously in the, in the open meeting, I discussed an ability to maybe get that trenched. Uh, I don't think the, that the homeowner wasn't certain and neither was the uh, representative from, from Tesla. And uh, I would like to see if that could uh, be done. So Chris, yep. uh, could you send to Kim a rough sketch on something to show where you would like to see that uh, conduit go down? I sure can. Yep. So that the, when it goes back to the applicant, they can see where our thoughts are. Yes, I can. That way it will be clear. Hopefully it will be and clear. I, and I think, I mean, even with our suggestion, Vasek, I think that um, it sounds like it was something that probably wasn't considered at all. They were looking at the house and where it would go on the house. It didn't seem that the, um, 
there was a discussion about trenching it necessarily. So giving them a chance to talk about that, if it's feasible at all. Right. Um, and if not, you know, we'll be back to discuss the outside conduit again. Okay. And hopefully we'll be able to wrap this up in two weeks. Definitely. Yeah. I think For that sure. there's anybody that's trying to impose further on the family, but I do think Chris is right. Unless you're doing these meetings all the time, uh, the, exposure to the trenching aspect with these outbuildings is something we see all the time and we wouldn't have expected it uh, from this family um, or this contractor necessarily. Now that they've had a chance to hear about it, it may be, uh, I think it's important that it at least be considered. We wish them well with the project. Absolutely. They have a long way to get to their panel to begin with. There's one corner of the home to begin with and sure. hopefully this is viable. Great. All those in favor of table say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, the application is tabled. Application 6005-21, the application at 35 Oldham. May I have a motion? I'm gonna uh, make a motion to uh, table, uh, at least for the purposes of discussion. Uh, I'll second for the discussion. Okay. Um, I would like them, if, if they are in a position where they need to um, begin construction, and so they would need an approval today instead of two weeks from now, you know, I would be inclined to uh, think differently. Um, but if they're still at a stage where they're contemplating where they might go, it might be nice to be able to see uh, the drawings of this um, home um, modified a, a little bit to reflect the, the change, unless other members of the commission feel comfortable that they can envision uh, the change just based on what we see um, from the drawings that we have. Uh, I have a, just a couple questions. One was that I didn't get a chance to ask about the Harvey uh, window, that they wanted the tribute instead of the majesty. And I'm just wondering, uh, we did not get a chance to ask about that or nobody else asked about it. Um, and I'm wondering if that is a different kind of window from the outside than the majesty. I believe Doug that the, that the information sent to us that is not a wood interior, which we wouldn't rule on anyways, but it is all man-made. Is, but is it, uh, is it, the magic? There is a small the spec sheet there. But yeah, I don't know the width or the exposures, right? As we, I mean, it isn't going to prove it, it in a good color, obviously. Is the yeah. uh, majesty aluminum on the outside? Yes, it's a rat. It's a, yeah. It's a comp and, yeah. And shiny the one. Maybe some other material on the outside? Well, again, just the cut sheet, we have a very small one. Um, I'm trying to get to it. Sorry, all the pages. Thank here. you. Three, five. Which one, Vasek? 45. Thank you. You know, while we're looking at that, uh, you know, I think that's a good point. Um, but I think to return to, you know, my my um, inclination was to approve and stip out that they remove the overhang and the returns. And then if they wanted, if they didn't think that that was feasible to have them come back with an amendment, um, I don't, no, I could live with that. Um, but I think maybe with the window question, um, you know, it might be worth tabling. I don't know what other people think. The, the only reason why I'm asking about it is, is I think if I recall correctly, 77, we may, uh, that does not have uh, majesties, I don't think. And one of the reasons that we went with the uh, other product was that in white, it actually may look better in the non-aluminum. Um, and so I think that's part of what drove the decision down the street. But since these windows are black, it may the same thing may govern. It may be that black vinyl or black um, uh, fiberglass is prefer preferable to black aluminum. But um, that was something I mean, there's going to be a lot of black on that, on those windows when this is all said and done. Am I correct that we're talking black windows on this house? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 
So it's kind of a, a, a big aspect of the house, um, especially since there aren't many windows, houses uh, with black windows on that street right now. Um, and we just looked at an, a house of inspiration that had white windows, uh, the one on, on Garden. And uh, so I'm kind of, um, I'm not completely, I'm not completely sure yet this house isn't going to stand out even um, as far as it is right now. It's not that I want to impose on, on them uh, uh, not being able to make that house singular, uh, but it, it's just another thought that uh, came to mind. I really appreciate the fact that they came to the original meeting, uh, I mean, for the um, informational, and what we've learned today is really interesting as well. Um, but I, I leave it to you all um, to see um, if you're more towards what Jen's initial thought was, or if we think that there's, uh, it's worth thinking a bit more on this before the uh, actual approval's given. Okay, my two cents worth? Yes. The changes made to the house are going to make this house look different than the rest of the houses on the street, period. The gables are going to be different. The uh, overhang, it's going to have overhangs or maybe no overhangs, but that's going to be a change. Uh, all these things put together. This is going to be a unique house. It's not going to read the same as every other house on that street. That is not a bad thing. Uh, as has been uh, pointed out, numerous times before, this is an evolving community. Now, if you're gonna go and, I mean, if you're gonna go with black windows, you were concerned about it looking 2020s. Black windows are gonna look 2020s because what? those are gonna go away. The next color is gonna come in five years from now and that's where we're gonna be seeing time after time after time. Uh, so it's gonna be a time capsule of itself. Houses are time capsules. Uh, sometimes changes are made. Sometimes people put chimneys on really nice Victorians where they don't need to be. They come off eventually or not. Um, but Do you have an example of that? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll try to come up with one. <laughs> um, on, the other, on the other hand, Vasek, 77, when we first looked at that project, what? there were a lot of- Whoa, 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 whoa. 77 what? Oh, on, on the same street that it was made reference to earlier, last house on the right on the circle. That house was completely redone just a year or two ago. That's the house with uh, Mar uh, Harvey non-majesty windows uh, that I was referring to a few minutes ago. When you look at that house, uh, it certainly looks like it's been updated, but it doesn't seem uh, it's not as much of a change in some ways as, as. Um, yeah, but the cul-de-sac, cul-de-sac there, Doug, is all different. You got raised ranches, and they're unique. Right. That street, that was afterthought. But Understand. you are right. I mean, it's definitely changed. You know, it's just, and it's in, it's in a, it's in a more isolated area of the street, no less. I mean, this is in a section of six houses that are all kind of pretty similar when you first get on to Oldham. And I'm not saying that they that it has to be the same and that it has to be a time capsule and that they haven't already uh, made a lot of gestures that help can keep the look. Um, but um, like I said, it's- uh, Doug, I, it's think it's a, I think it's a big project and I think giving it another two weeks to simmer and look at that issue um, is certainly reasonable on a project of this size. I do want to point out too, I'm looking at a cut sheet for the tribute windows and they appear to be an all vinyl window. It's not a clad window. So that may be something we want to look at a little further um, and maybe get a sample of that window so we have a better idea of what it really looks like for the next meeting. Um, and Especially as, flat as, black. Yeah, as soon as possible so that if other windows need to be considered, that can be done so that we're ready to really act on this at the next meeting in two weeks. 
Okay. Thank you. I, like I said, a matte finish black in that might be a real success. Um, on the other hand, maybe not. So. Exactly. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion, the application is tabled. Um, moving on to the approval of minutes for February 9. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Doug, we're waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll second it and at the same time acknowledge our reporter, uh, Linda, and our historic district coordinator, Kim, at the same time for all the efforts they make on behalf of us and our citizens each week. Really noted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Moving on to other business, um, public comments on general matters, Kim? Hi, um, let's see, what do we have first? We have 400 Hartford Avenue. Yes. So uh, is this the, um, the informal uh, that you're making reference to as opposed to something uh, to be read? Correct. The 400 Hartford Avenue would like to have a pre-application meeting um, to discuss some building projects that they have. And I think they're here. Great. That's awesome. great. I saw Maggie awesome. earlier. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us back. Um, so we were in like a couple weeks ago as a in really informal meeting on our project. Um, but now I think we have plans for you in a 3D model. Um, also tonight with us um, are our architects for the addition on the house, Mike McDonald, and our architect for the barn, um, Tom DeMahala. So they can speak to questions too. But I think our goal tonight is to try to find out any concerns, anything uh, or advice that you guys would have in us being able to file our, app, our official application going forward. Um, but I guess I could start with, and I'm not sure if you guys have, since our application isn't officially in, if you guys have seen our packets or not, but I we thought I would start with the sharing my screen of. Um, uh, that would be great, Maggie. And also I should acknowledge Matt is here as well. Uh so this is, a 3D model of how the barn and house will compare. So when we talked, uh, you know, we, we had done a, uh, an application a while ago for a structure in this position. And when we uh, spoke to you last- We're having a hard time hearing you, or at least I am. Sure, one of the concerns that uh, was raised was uh, how the two structures would play together um, and uh, what, whether the building would be significantly we can't hear you sorry i can't hear yeah no okay go ahead Maggie. can you hear me yeah <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> um so uh I i'm very loud it's the italian i guess um <laughs> i think it's just because you're near the mic than uh matt is oh, okay um, maybe we can move that because I'd like him to be able to talk too. But yeah, one of the biggest concerns that I think when we came forward was whether the barn would be a little domineering of the house, basically. And so we wanted to be able to show you how they would align and size wise and kind of give you a better sense of that. So um, this can actually, if I can make it work right, and Matt might be better at that, maybe you can do that. Well, I have that. Hold on. <laughs> you, um, we can rotate it so you can see it from all sides, basically, with that the new- That would be great. Maggie, uh, this is Claire Mead. Um, can you, is this to scale? I mean, we do have your packet and the west facade looks different in this 3D model. Um, than it looks in the packet. Um, so uh, in which way the West was that like, so- uh, The West so is Main Street, I mean, it's Hartford yeah, Avenue. So, yeah, Hartford Avenue here. So mm -hmm. um, you mean from a scale perspective? Yep, roof I'll, heights. I will ask, uh, I will ask Tom uh, if he wants to comment on that because I believe this is Tom's model. Tom's microphone on. 
I'm not sure if he's joined the audio. My understanding is that it is. Yeah. Tom's muted right now. Yeah. Um, but the, the two structures are reasonably the same height. Uh, you know, we did spend a fair amount of time working uh, from the last design uh, to try to minimize the height uh, and we minimized the footprint generally. And I think we took it to the to about as small a scale as we felt we could while it still looked like a barn without uh, looking like some sort of a, a caricature of a barn. Yeah, I'm looking at, at page A2.3 of your packet. Let's see. What? The west elevation. Is that, no, nope. no problem. That's looking at that, comparing those. Is that the, which are on the west elevation? Yeah, to Claire's point, when you look at that drawing, the roofs appear to be perhaps level. And in this mock-up, the barn appears to be Smaller. significantly shorter. I guess I, I see them as being roughly the same, but uh, you know, without Tom being able to, to speak, I, I don't know if the model is in some way different. Um, yeah, to my eye, I guess they look the same. In both, the barn looks lower to me. I guess we could line it up with a ruler. Um, <laughs> and actually, in your drawing, there's a straight line from one roof to the other that have them at the same exact height in the picture, I'm, in the diagram I'm looking at. Um, Claire, the house is for, or the barn is forward of the house by a significant amount. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the height to the peak. And actually, the, the, in the packet that we've got, it says that the barn has been moved back and is on the same plane as the house in terms of lineups. So Yeah, we're going to, we're going to move it back. I, I don't know exactly what the same plane is. I haven't measured that out specifically. It'll be, it'll be a few feet for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, your packet says two feet and it shows a, a yellow line between yeah, the two. So that's what probably, I'm referring to. You know, I, I drew that, we were away, so I wasn't able to actually do some measurements on that. So Tom, Tom may know what that actually is in terms of actual size. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can see the line here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can make that out, but you can Tom see- Tom lost line. his connection on Zoom. Okay. Uh, but we're that's not- seeing, We're not seeing whatever you're looking at. We're seeing- yeah, we're not. That Red, we're seeing the, the 3D the house, the, oh. The, oh, we're still seeing that. Okay, because I have to right share here. my, I have to switch my share. Okay. Are you able to hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Having some technical difficulty. <laughs> okay. So forgive me. I, I missed a lot of that. Um, so what we were concerned sure. about, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go I ahead, Maggie. Say, I was going to say their concern is that when they look at the, um, plans with the west and south elevation, the top of the barn seems to line up with the house versus the 3D model, which seems to show the barn being lower than the house. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I was, I didn't have a definitive uh, grade detail. So on the elevation, I lined them up uh, differently, but my, the 3D model is intended to be as close to what I thought grade would look like and how they would interact. I believe the house is slightly taller than the, than the garage and it would depend on how low the garage is settled into the, the driveway. I'd need the elevation of the driveway and the elevation of the grade at house to, to get it exact, but I could do that if you get me the information. Well, it is pretty clear that as drawn, they're the same height. Uh, one of the other concerns that I have uh, is not so much about the massing, which I think is a bit of a concern here, um, but is the, the design of the building is in some ways uh, pretty contemporary uh, in the sense, I when I say contemporary, I mean like uh, a 19, um, a late 20th century uh, colonial look uh, with shutters, 
um, with the X's on the barn doors, um, with the dormers on the side. It just looks pretty new uh, compared to the relatively first period house next door to it. Uh, and I realize it's a struggle because you're trying to make a usable building. Um, uh, but, and I don't know if these are just artifacts uh, in terms of the way that the skin of the building looks right now, but I think that's part of what uh, so, feels a little bit inconsistent with the home next to it. So we could, the, the um, appearance of the carriage doors and the shutters on the windows are just a fir first take. Um, those could be uh, simplified significantly. It could be a more of a tongue and groove or barn board door configuration for the carriage doors. They would be true carriage doors. And as such, they typically have some type of cross bucking in them that actually supports the, the door structure itself. But that can be simplified. I actually sent um, a, a link to Maggie and Matt that showed some other options that are a little less um, cartoonish, for lack of a better way to put it. The, um, the shutters on the upper portion, the, the windows themselves don't necessarily have to have shutters. The goal was to be able to close them and have them look like a, an actual door. Um, but with two of them, that's probably not really a functional reality. So and unless we went to a single window of a larger size with shutters that be, could be closed so that it looked like a functional barn door up there, eliminating those shutters might not be a bad option. It would make it look more simplistic. Well, certainly shutters on a barn is not very common uh, from that era, whereas mm -hmm. a door on one side of a, an opening, you know, if you're looking for something like that, there's a lot of examples in uh, country carpenters type uh, kit barns that are available that kind of uh, uh, are not inappropriate for a peak like that. One of the issues, of course, is this is a gambrel roof um, so it's, it creates a bigger gable end than you find on a lot of, uh, uh, of um, ends of barns. So I understand you want to take advantage of the glass uh, and, and light into the space, but something a little less um, residential looking, I think would be a good idea there. Uh, uh, so, um, go ahead. Uh, you, you, Sorry. Put, you, know, you all go ahead and, and finish talking about the, the design details and then I'll chime in. So I do think that's like one of the reasons we want to be here tonight is for your advice, what you guys would think along those lines, because, yeah, I think we're pretty flexible on like what doors go on the barn doors for the windows. Again, we were trying to mimic the Cove warehouse a bit and it has like two sort of, it has a center door and then two windows. So that is where that came from, but we can be flexible with that as well. I get um, that. Go so ahead. Y'all go ahead. No, you, uh, you should go. Thanks. Okay. Cause I'm going to change the subject. So let's make sure that you all have kind of finished on, on that conversation part. Uh, well, as long as we're still on the barn. Uh, are no, you I'm, still still, on the barn? I'm still on the barn, but um, okay. go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. No, if we're okay. still on the barn, then you uh, then go wherever you want with it. Okay, thanks, Doug. So I'm going to actually take the conversation sort of up a little higher away from design elements. Um, I find the massing of this barn to be a real problem. Um, and in fact, I look back to our conversation a couple of weeks ago, and I felt like the commissioners were actually very consistent and very clear in talking about the massing, not overwhelming the house. Um, so we are now a two and a half story, amber roof, um, certainly the width is the same. The depth is substantially larger. We talked about things last, last conversation, like bringing in fill and moving the barn back away from the house substantially, bringing it down into the area, which I understand is wet, um, perhaps putting it on the other side of the house. Now that we see the rest of your plans, clearly there's not room over there. Um, I, I have, I didn't, I don't need to go down into the design details as much because to me, this doesn't pass just on massing. Um, it just doesn't, it's too big. And especially for this house, given the age and the historic preeminence, if you will, of the house, um, 
I, I just think that I think it's just too big. It's just the massing overwhelms the house. Can I sort of ask what kind of structure would not, it would be a, an appropriate structure, but that would be a functional garage that would not be a barn? Uh, you know, I have to say that's really not mine to design. I, I don't, I know I'm kind of begging the question, but it's not mine to design. I mean, what you have right there right now is a one story kind of shed roof lean to look, um, which is very small and then puts your eye to the house. And that's not what we have here. Part of, uh, I think part of what Claire is uh, troubled by is something that, uh, I could speak to, sorry, let me just close this door. Um, the, you know, part of it is that the gable is facing Hartford Avenue. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, kit barns that are available where you would have, if you have the ridge in the same direction as the house, um, you might end up with like, a, windows above the doors uh, with a kind of one and a half story rise with a roof line that would then allow you to maybe put a dormer on the back of it. Um, I don't know if that kind of massing would be more comfortable to people uh, and if turning the roof around would be more comfortable uh, to, uh, to folks. I think that, um, I mean, that's, that's one thought. I mean, there are a lot of, of kit barns that seem to evoke uh, a better mate to this home than I think this design does. Although I realize it's inspired by the um, Cove Warehouse. And as a result, I'm interested in that. Uh, I was interested in that to begin with. Uh, but it's kind of hard to make that design uh, less imposing on the house because by its very nature, it shows so much in front. So, uh, and especially because the drawing that we have, like I'm looking at page 58. I think that this drawing on page 58, the building is smaller, the, the barn is smaller than it actually would be. Uh, that it, it, this almost looks like the drawing from the 3D model. Whereas if you go um uh, to the previous page 57 uh it, it the line shows that the the ridge is at the same height as the rest of the house um you know i also think part of it is where the structure is positioned on the property you know we worked through um and i forgive me because i don't remember the address number um the museum house that we worked that we worked through, worked through uh, uh, closer to up Hartford Avenue. Um, you know, they, ha they have a story and a half, two story garage that they put on. It is substantially back from the house. It's way behind. So it, your eye doesn't view those two together uh, from any vantage point. And so that's one of the problems is that this is right on the street line. Um, and what part of what we talked about two weeks ago, I guess it was two weeks ago at the last meeting, um, positioning that somewhere else on the property. Yeah, I think um, we had looked at, from your talk, we looked at bumping it back as far as the house because we can only go so far back with it. Um, and so that's kind of where we took, where we were able to take it to basically. Um, when you say, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you say you can only take it back so far, why is, why is that? Well, two reasons, I think. I think we want to be respectful of our neighbors and we don't want to block their view of the cove on the, uh, the White House to on the um, south side of us, north, north side. Side. north side. And then um, eventually we do come to a line in our property where uh, it becomes Army Corps of Engineer and we can't build anything. Yeah, it, becomes, it becomes wetland, I guess. That's fairly far back, though, from where you where you would need it's, to be. It would be into the it'd be well into the hill for that. I think the the our primary uh, our primary concern with that would be not not doing anything that would be detrimental to the neighbors. 
although you've put a very substantial, um, certainly from the, the west elevation, the Hartford Avenue elevation, it's the same width. The depth is so much greater and that's really what um, Mark and Caitlin to the north are gonna see is that really substantial depth that's gonna kind of block all of their view down. So you, you've uh, we've had, kind well, of already uh, done that. Yeah, we, we've, we've spoken with Mark and Caitlin a lot about the structure and they've seen all of the design plans for it. Um, so I, I think I think we can work with Mark and Caitlin based on where we have it now. I, I think if we were gonna push it back significantly, it would be a different conversation with them. Yeah. So can I weigh in here with a couple of thoughts? Sure. So I would sort of echo a lot of the other commissioners thoughts about something doesn't look quite right. And it is, it, to me also, the garage looks more prominent than the house. And as we've been talking here, I've been sort of, sort of trying to find some words to describe it. And I think part of it is the different roof lines in that the house that you have is a simple gable roofed salt box. And you're putting this with a gamber roof with dormers, which much more elaborate roof lines. Um, and also the gamber roof, as Doug mentioned, exposes a lot of wall to the street. If you had a simple gable rather than a gambro, it would reduce the amount of wall facing it. You'd also be probably limited to just one window, but it sounded like that was something that wouldn't be a bad thing anyway, because you could go for a bigger window and make it look like a barn door on the second floor, a hayloft door. Um, if you, and going with a simple gable would certainly not preclude the dormers that you're proposing. Uh, they'd be set back just like they are now they'd have more wall exposed, but depending on what you pick for pitches and the like, it might work well also. Um, so if you can reduce the, uh, the wall facing the street, if you can simplify the roof line, I think that would help. And along the same lines, I've got the feeling that that same argument when we get around to the back of the house and your kitchen would also be relevant there. Because again, you're on the kitchen addition, I know we're getting away from the garage, but it's a gamble roof mixed with simple shed roofs on the, uh, not simple shed roofs, simple gable roofs on the rest of the building. And it's sort of, it doesn't quite fit. And I realize, you know, the ideal thing would be to run the, ga the gamble roof into the existing house, but you're precluded from making changes to the house. So I, I recognize where that, I assume that's where that's coming from. Uh, well, from an engineering standpoint, we didn't want to actually put any, we didn't want to do anything that would put load on the on the roof line. So I didn't even try, we didn't even really try and go there. I, I think I'm, I'm with you for both prospects. I don't really want to do anything that touches the uh, existing yeah. structure of the ancient house. But uh, I think a simplified roof line would help certainly I think it would help in both cases as far as, at least from where I sit. Uh, and again, to repeat what the other commissioners have said, I do feel that also pushing that garage back and down, down the hill, even though it would give you a sloped driveway, uh, it might, you might have enough room to sort of flatten out in front of it uh, to mitigate any water problems you, that would cause. Uh, but again, if you can drop that garage down, even a few feet, it would help a lot as far as the impact on the relationship between the house and the garage. So that's my two cents. I, I, I just sent a couple samples of um, those country carpenters barns I just mentioned to Botsik. I don't know if Vatsik has access to them or not, but I, I agree with him when he talks about the um, uh, uh, simplifying the roof lines. Doug, what? if you build either of those garages next to his house, you want to talk about overwhelming. 
I understand, but I, 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 the point that I'm making is that they are um, they are simpler in their roof line. I mean, I I really was trying to embrace the uh, the gambrel uh, on the both the garage and the house uh, on the garage, but then when I saw it on the house, I, it just seemed to me that the gambrel mixes a design that's later than the first period feel of the whole property. And I guess that's part of the reason why a simple gable roof uh, on both the garage and the, the house um, uh, was more to my uh, thinking that that would be more successful for both of them. Now, the white building I just sent Vatsik, I realize looks very sizable because it's, it's oversized, but I do think it looks more like something that would be in that period. Um, because can you it, say that? Can you share that, Vatsik? I couldn't figure out how to share because somebody else was sharing. Oh, I'll stop my share. Thanks. Uh, give, give me a moment here and I will. Thank you. Which kind of brings yeah. to the so If I could jump in to just say something quick to, to me, ensuring a lot of farms around, connect, this to me almost looks if this was on a farm or to evoke a barn, it's more like the machine shop. It looks like a butler building way the gambrel are. I think there has to be a, a way to get you the utility and the height and, and you know the simplicity that the house is, even if it is same roof line, I agree. I mean, you're, we're asking a lot of you to move it back because of the grade. Even a five foot drop is quite a bit of a difference uh, to push this back. Uh, I'm assuming, are you using the same foundation? Are you using the ground floor of the foundation? Is that a cellar basement that you're using? Because For the barn? Yeah. So no, the foundation has a, a crack in it. So we were going to brief. No, but okay. Yeah, that's, that's going to go right. You had a photo there, but I'm looking at, at uh, Doug had referenced the two page in our packet, page 59, it's your A3 drawing, because even to scale, you have, it, it looks like, again, that's what's going to be your east elevation facing the cove. Right. You see that right there. You have some people, at, I'm height challenged, but is that a six foot person or what's, and because your basement level looks like elevation back from there is almost eight feet up. Is that accurate or? On the back see side, where the person yeah, is in the walk out. I think it's close. I think it is close to. Uh, it's over what? six. Feet, it says seven nine and a in a, I think. Yeah. And a quarter, right? So that's a height, and that's a walk out in the back because, to the uh, east, east to the uh, cove. Yeah, there's a door. Yep. So yep. this is then. Then you have a person. Is that is it going to be? Because we really don't see much off that cove side other than the the windows here, mm -hmm. but. So then you have someone on a deck that's a deck extending over that, or is that that's yeah. an inside person? Oh, that's an inside person, I think. So mm -hmm. what we don't really see here is, and we always ask like, what, what is the height from the ground? Not, not from that side, because this would mirror the front elevation. What is that height to the peak? How many feet are we talking about? 12 feet, 18 feet? Um, I don't know what we're looking at. I can give you measurements if we're talking about the house. Are we talking about the house now? Are we talking? No, about no. This, this is the garage. This is your A three. Yeah. So this is a. This is Tom. This is the the east elevation. Because um, we're talking about massing here, okay. which is all we all have yeah. a concern about. How does it look? Yep. But in reality, what are the dimensions? Yeah. And the so further I'm, back, further back, it pushes right. The the taller that sort of basement element becomes, and then yeah, then you, you start talking. Feet. About, yeah. Yeah. So you telling us you cannot and Mark asked earlier, you can't go farther back because you have that other that that Claire referred to where you show that yellow line that's on uh, that's page 62 of ours. Yeah. Because Now this will the corners, the corners of these will line up. Is that right? I mean, our goal, our goal is to push it back as far as we reasonably can and, and at least align it with the house, which I think is, you know, looking at it here is and I'm eyeballing it at about four feet. So what um, you're telling us today, this is as far back as you can go. I think if we go much further, we we start to encroach on Mark and Caitlin's view. Well, we tear, we tear up some existing I mean, planting. Back to you've got a very very deep building, and we don't we don't have any drawings, so I don't have a sense of how deep it is, but it's substantially deep. So as your hill goes down, 
when you go back, you've got more fill at the back to accommodate this really big building. If it were not so deep, you might be able to push it back further without coming down the hill so much. So there are lots of tweaks, but um, right. you know, I think what you're hearing, you're hearing some about designs, but you're also hearing a lot about massing and massing that, that in the same plane as the house, um, which I hope what you're hearing is um, some pretty clear statements of that's a problem. And I don't know what your solution is, but it's a problem. Yeah, it sounds like the solution is a modern garage. Is oh. that what we're is that what you, we're shooting for here? You, I mean, because I, you know, I can come back to you with it. I can come back to you. That. Well, you you can come yeah. back to us with anything you like. Of course, that's I mean, a statement of fact. I guess you know? I you know I guess I'm I'm in in the interest of the dialogue, right? Interested in figuring out, you know, and I, and I I'm okay with the concepts of changing the roof line and even changing the orientation. I think those are those are interesting. I would think one of the one of the rationales for the gambrel, just kind of you know, period appropriateness maybe uh, aside, was that it actually fronts right because those, those dormers are set back uh, four feet, six feet, um, maybe even more if we if we tweak the design a little bit from the gambrel. So it's not necessarily obvious from the from the photo or from any of the drawings. Um, That's a good point. But those those dormers don't. You know they're not at the facade, and the gambrel actually minimizes the front of the barn to some degree. Um, so if we went if we went with another roof design, it, we could we could actually wind up with a higher peak, um, trying to get the same effect. So we might wind up just popping out. You know, squeeze the balloon in different ways. It sort of pops out in different places. Could I speak to that for a moment? I think what you're not considering is making a smaller footprint. Is what Claire is getting at. But then well, you the can front, push back. Well, the front, yeah, the front has has to accommodate two cars for it to be functional for us. Right. The length, the length is accommodating four cars for us. We we already have two cars in the garage, that's why we have two outside, and we'd like to get them all. I'm sorry, you cut out there. Yeah, right at the end. Um. So the length for us is. I mean, honestly, we'd love it to be shorter too, but we have two car, we have four cars, which is why we have two cars currently always in the driveway. And our goal with this is to get all four cars in the garage. So well, snow blowers and the large garbage cans and all the other things. So we are looking for a level of functionality based on what we mm -hmm. have. I sent, I sent Vasek a picture of a barn that's on a slope that has a uh, entry underneath for two more vehicles. Um, and that's part of, uh, maybe part of the solution here is if you, if you could use, if you could use the upstairs, uh, the main entry for the two vehicles you use the most, and then use the entry down below for the uh, vehicles that you use less often, maybe that would work. Or you, you work two vehicles into some of your other additions. So you pull them apart. We've had other, we've discussed that with other applicants. But four vehicles is a very modern concept next to a first period house. You, just, you know, again, you could have had a very large barn with a house like that, but it wouldn't have been in the same plane. Well, it wouldn't be suspended as high as, as a tandem as a tandem will give you there. I, I agree with what um, Matt was saying about the uh, from the side, the dormers look more attractive than they do dead front on the elevation. And so maybe it would be less imposing than as drawn. But um, I part of the reason I shared what I shared with Vatsik is because I I I you may pull that off with a gambrel, um, but I do think that there's something to be said about um, trying to uh, have a rear entry with the driveway that comes down there on the side of your property. Do you have room for that? So to like make the driveway come around the side of the barn to enter vehicles from the back? Yeah. Right hand side, the side not necessarily from the back. In, well, the side of the back. So the, on the north side of the barn, I think we have maybe a little over 11 or 12 feet um, from the property line there. 
So there's probably not enough space to do that on that side. Um, between the house and the barn, uh, I think it's probably about double that. So it's plausible. Um, we'd be doing some significant changes to the sort of the approach to the house at that point because there's a significant brick walkway and yeah. a whole bunch of other. My on the right hand side. Is, how about I the also, south side of the house? The south side. Oh, to do a dr second driveway, basically. Yeah, come all the way through and around. And an additional structure. Well, no, the structure would be under. There'd yeah. be two story, one below, one at eye level. Yeah, what we'd have to go through to do that. Um, I guess we would have to be yeah. outside outside of where we have the current patio structure and deck. So you'd have to come around to quite a bit. You'd have to come out quite a bit to do it. I'd wonder if we'd wind up into the very large old tree that we have there. May I, I mean, ask a I, question or two? Sure. Sure. Okay, so um, we, we you were talking about potentially changing the roof line to diminish the overall mass. And um, as Matt and Maggie were saying, one of their goals was to be able to house four vehicles. Um, but if let's say we just discuss the, the overall mass or the height of the building rather than the overall mass. Um, if we were to go to a, a standard gable roof system, in order to get the usable space above that garage without increasing the width, the, the eaves would have to be fairly high um, in order to, you know, the gambrel was kind of a nod at trying to bring the roof down, line down as much as possible while still offering usable space underneath it. So that give, gave us the lowest roof line possible. If, unless we go with a very shallow roof pitch, similar to the upper slope on the gambrel, it'll be difficult to get meaningful space in there unless the dormers are full length. Um, it, it, it's doable, but it's going to make the sidewalls of the garage look much taller at the same time. So I'm just looking at trying to see what other options there are there and trying to uh, des describe what that might do to the massing. And actually, from my perspective, would actually would make it look larger, I think. What is um, the square footage on the second floor of the proposed building? Uh, I believe it's 864. Part of that is an exterior balcony on the back. Wow. That's, that's it's, the size of my barn. It's bigger. It's bigger than my barn. It's yeah, not, and that's not reflected in that drawing at all. No, I mean, that's, that's, that's that, my, I mean, you know, my barn is about 1,200 square feet. It's about 600 a floor. For those of you who know it and saw it go back up. So the building. Even that, even that structure on the same plane as the house would be imposing. You just wouldn't see that that up close to the main house. Well, you know, it's a grandfather, it's a grandfather um, incongruity, is that what they call it? Yeah, when we rebuilt it. Um, your, well, yours is a different situation because it yeah. is separate from the, well back from the house. I mean, yeah. it's just that you're on a corner, so you see it. Um, have you thought of an outbuilding to the south where you don't have the grade problems on that piece of property and you would have more space to put, put something that looks like an outbuilding? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily prevent us from having to rebuild the existing garage in some fashion though. Well, if, you're, if, if what you're hearing from everyone is that the massing is too big, <laughs> for what you're trying to accomplish in that location, I think your solution is looking at another location. If that's, so what, you're, if that's what you're intent on for size. You know, I can't speak for everybody, but what I'm hearing from everybody is that. And so you have an enormous piece of property with a ton of frontage. And the south portion of that piece of property is much more level further back than where your current garage is. Could, so you're if saying I could like, ask, if I could oh, ask this question, um, maybe this would yeah, make it easier to, to uh, determine how we could make it make it work. If the if we assume that the ridge heights were identical as they're currently drawn, how much 
if we were able to lower the barn two feet, would that make it acceptable? In other words, if taken the given um, shape of the barn currently, if we lower it, um, keeping the same front line of the barn, would that bring it into an acceptable level of, of um, subservience? It's, or would diminishing the dormers, you know, I can, I can squeeze as much height out of that so that it goes down as much as possible, if that would make it more agreeable. But I, I mean, kind of need to know whether or not the general design is just giving too much area facing the street and we need to revisit that entirely. I mean, for me, it's, I, I would have to see it and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, see, see it visually, but you know, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how you're going to get a four car garage footprint in that space and make it look not massive. That's, that's what I'm having a really hard time. I just don't think it fits into that space unless you move it back, uh, you know, away from the street line and the streetscape. And then you run into your problem with your neighbor. And I, and I get that. But for me, a four car garage next to that house, I, I'm having, a, I, I have to see it. I'd have to see it to, to make me believe it. I just, it doesn't really, yeah. And so Jennifer, just to go back to your point, are you suggesting like, if, if we wanna keep this size, what we would do is just pitch a totally different location on the property? I think it's something to consider based on what you've heard. Might be a yeah. better option. I know years ago, I mean, I contemplated the idea of maybe it would be better over there. I we'd have to look at sizing because we do have a beautiful tree I wouldn't want to lose. And I always kind of thought like, well, this part of the property is just nice and untouched. This part's already touched, you know. The uh, the question that I have is if you built a a two-car barn right where the garage is now and you put a side entry for two cars below it, uh, were you saying that north of that building, there's not enough room for a driveway to get down there? There's yeah. not. It, I don't think so. I think there's enough room maybe to drive by it, but I don't think you could make any kind of a turn. Yeah, into we'd be the right on that property line. Yeah. I see. Because to me, I, I, it's hard to imagine a four car building of four, uh, on the same level of uh, working uh, because it would be so sizable right next to uh, the house. Um, and, and putting two vehicles down below is uh, a good solution. I also think that I share your idea that it's, it would be nice not to have to relocate the accessory building from where it is if you could somehow get to those two uh, cars that would be downstairs. I sent another barn to uh, Vasek. Okay. Uh, you, you guys want to see all the pictures that Doug sent? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. I don't know why he just sends them to you and not everybody else. I what know. Do why doesn't he I've share to learn, I have to learn to share. I have never done it before. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big thing that most kids learn in kindergarten, but that's okay. <laughs> share my screen, pardon so, me. Here's the two level barn that Doug sent me which like I said, is if we're worried about massing before, we're definitely got it here. Yeah, that looks like a three level barn to me. Well, that's yeah. facing the cove, that would face the cove. Right, right. right. Yeah, okay. okay. Again, dwarfing the house. So that's your utility for all your lawn, your barrels, what have you, but where do we get the cars? Yeah, you need 25 feet. A long walk with the barrels to the street. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> This is another one that Doug sent me. Uh, you know, it's it's I'm not seeing it. Can't see it. You it's, haven't changed his screen. Oh, yet. I'm sorry. Uh, sharing is paused. Bring your shared window to the front. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to stop this and then I'm going to try sharing something else. There we go. This, this, I think, is 36 by 36. Yeah, well, this is longer than I would suggest, but 
what I'm saying is, is that if you were to, uh, I mean, you see there's windows above plain doors. Uh, mm -hmm. You have mostly a roof. Uh, you know, to me, this is a, a lot similar, a lot more like what you currently have. And if you could put two cars below it, um, you know, maybe you would have enough room upstairs for what you're looking for if you modify the back roof a bit. But um, that was the inspiration for that one. And then uh, you can go on to the next spots. Okay. Uh, Again, that was a, an example of one of that was only one story of flatness facing uh, Hartford Avenue. Okay. I have not figured out how to do consecutive sharing. Uh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Just to jump in too quick, uh, Kim, I think someone has their hand up, a uh, Micah. Is that one of your guys' architects? No, he's on the list to- Got gotcha, you uh, next. Formally also. Oh, okay. Thank you. I am having we're, really- hard We're time. sorry. Micah. I didn't know I could lower my hand also. I just, <laughs> <laughs> we're Put all a down. bunch of Luddites here apparently. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I know. Okay. I this this barn, I what I thought it would have is that it has a lot of space in it, uh, and like I said, it has kind of like a half story rise above the doors, so that there's a, a lot of room on that second floor, and because of the way that the roof line is, you could probably dormer the back, uh, and and find that you have all the space and light you would need. Uh, as you can see, it has three windows on the side, two smaller ones uh, at the bottom and uh, a larger one in the gable end. Again, this is a situation where the amount of uh, roof, uh, be, where you're matching the ridge line to Hartford Avenue. And so I think it uh, results in a front of the building that is at least no higher than the front of uh, the house. Of course, Doug. I, I have a, how, a question. Doug, I'm sorry, Doug, how is that gonna affect the massing? How is it gonna affect the massing? Yeah, I mean, well, you flipped it. Well, I think that if you you're looking- the roof, it, it's, still, it's still a 1600 square foot four car. No, I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still talking, this building is like, 26 by 26. I'm not talking about a four car building. Okay. So you're saying do that, but small. Got it. All right, uh, thank you. This is an oversized two bay building, which if you put two vehicles underneath it, solves your problem and still has plenty of living space on the second floor. Okay. And I, I guess what I'm trying to find out is with something like this, in this size be acceptable to those who have massing concerns about the gambrel that faces um, the uh, Hartford Avenue. Um, in this instance, uh, are we assuming, Doug, that it's going to be similar height to what we're already sort of presenting? I don't, I don't see how that solves anything. Um, it would be, I, I think it would be, I think maybe slightly lower, it would be, you know what this would be the size of? This would be the size of your 3D model, um, which yes, is to say it would, it would feel definitely smaller than the house, which the still drawings don't really give you that feeling, but the 3D drawings do. I think that the, the issue is still though that there, it's gonna be in the same, it's location, it's the plane of the house, and it's the square footage. And I, I, I just don't see how a design change makes that go away unless you make it a one story that steps back down. But I also think that, that our job isn't to design this. You know, our job is to raise concerns and then let them figure out with their property and their architects kind of what's gonna work. Because I'll get I know more your photos, property, Claire, though. I'm sorry? Doug has more photos. Oh, well, he's, he's <laughs> I think we move on to the other two. The they, they, they have a lot of information. They have two other uh, two other additions to propose. I agree with what you're saying. 
Yeah, yeah we have. I, have I, do, we I can... do want to direct this to the um, Sorry, to the back edition too now, um, because we do have another person waiting to make an informal presentation as well. But sure. um, just for perspective, the the footprint or the square footage of the first story of the main house is less than a thousand square feet. Um, and That's so true. when you're trying to make something subservient to that main house, keeping in mind that that first floor footprint is less than a thousand square feet um, is important. But let's okay. um, see what people have to say about the back edition. Sure. I can pull that up. No, I'm sharing my screen. Oh, I see. <clears throat> okay. Doesn't seem like a choice. No, we don't know how to share. Oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. um, Did that come up for you guys? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so the the back edition is only given our current edition square footage, this is minimally larger. So if you look at the deck off the back on the, the south elevation, it like extends and I think Mike can speak to this. I want to say it's two feet, but maybe it's four feet. Yeah, I don't think so. But yeah, some, uh, something along those lines. That is the only additional space. Otherwise, it follows the exact same footprint of our current edition. Yeah. So to rehash a little bit um, what we talked about last time with this, the uh, the goal here really is to tear off the existing additions and rebuild uh, basically a, a structure that's framed um, with the both both extensions. Uh, in terms of incorporating the roof line um, and to do a better job really just connecting them to the existing structure. Um, both have failings, which we, we kind of talked through last time um, that need to be addressed. Um, yeah, our real goal here, and we're gonna rebuild all of this is not an insignificant investment um, in the structure. And I think we gained something like 36 square feet or something like that out of the entire design. Um, nice so, kidding. Hmm? But you get a nice kitchen. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We'll get. We'll get some. We'll get some better interior. But. Uh, but ultimately, it's. Uh, it's not gaining. It's not going to gain a lot from the. Uh, from the real estate uh, square footage perspective. So. Um, so this really. And and so we went with a, the Gambrel style here, a little bit. A little bit because you know our barn design. We thought it mirrored it nicely. But uh, a little bit also because uh, we were looking at the house in one forty one Maine. Um, which I, I don't, it's not a salt box. I think it's more like a cape, uh, but that's Buzz's house, uh, which has an addition, uh, an L off it that is a Gambrel L. Um, so, you know, we felt like it was somewhat appropriate, although that does made up to the roof line, as you pointed out, uh, I think uh, Visek pointed out. So, um, but ultimately, you know, we're trying to keep the, uh, the features of the front of the house pretty much identical, except you can see a little bit less because we did the, the gambrel design. You actually see a little bit less of that extension that bumps up as the L that comes off the back um, than you do in the current design. And of course the current design is, is a very modern design and you know it's not really, uh, in my opinion, appropriate to the house. The width of the addition is the same as the current house. The depth of the addition is two foot eight inches further east. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, not that it drives the uh, look from the outside, but is the, are you, do you have two stories in the, in the addition or is it a big open roof uh, ceiling thing? It's cathedral ceiling. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted a second floor so bad. <laughs> um, uh, there just really wasn't one way to do it that I felt was uh, aesthetic well, you're, enough. You're getting your second floor downstairs, right? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's interesting to take to take a house that's a uh, you know because this house was moved, so um, you know to take a salt box and then point the salt box end of it away from the cove or, or towards the cove rather than the the window end of it. It's a uh, 
it's a it's a beautiful property and it's a it's a beautiful house it's just it's too bad there isn't a better way to get some some view from the second story yeah uh so yeah i think overall losing the the addition that's there i think and putting up whatever whatever you put in its place i think would be a net gain to the district uh, you've heard me voice my thoughts about the roof. Uh, I think, I really think for this house, simpler is better. Uh, but overall, this small little dormers over the windows look, will work with whatever roof line you go with. Uh, and I'm going to make a little jump uh, two ways. So the proportions of the windows work very well with the rest of the house, I think. So I think you're on track there. Uh, obviously from the back of the house, you know, you look at the only view of it is from the Cove parking lot, which is you need binoculars to see that. So, but I think overall, you, you're definitely on the right track there. Um, I think jumping back to the sore point of the garage is one of the other things is the windows in the garage look much bigger and more prominent than the windows on the front of the house. So I think that's another, just one sort of aside back to that. Why I, I think a lot of commissioners may have issues with the way it looks and the massing. Uh, but yeah, no, I think you're right on track with the, with the addition for the most part. Uh, yeah, aesthetically, the windows fitting into the stone foundation is certainly something that would have been done at at a period of time of that, of that period of time, and that works well. Uh, yeah, that's it. My two cents. I'm I'm sold out. <laughs> Tell it's getting late. Um, I have really mixed feelings about it. I I just keep coming back to the Gamble roof meeting up. To the salt box roof and that gap, it just, it, it, it's curious. Um, I, I don't have a problem with the smaller addition on the south side. Um, it, it does dramatically change the back of the house. Um, it dramatically changes the back of the house. Um, and while you can question the aesthetic choice of those back additions, they did serve the purpose um, of making it clear what was the old house and what was the new house. Um, and this, this begins to create a fiction that, and of course, you know, that's the big thing with the Department of Interior. Do you have it be the same or do you have it be different? I personally like to see it different. I mean, I would, could see a, mo a completely modern addition, you know, a la Lee Kukro. I mean, and that's fine too. Um, yeah, I mean, right. There's there's two really competing schools of thought there. Yep. You know, and we we debated them as well. I mean, one thing is that there's an addition here that there, this house has both currently, right? It has an addition that really saw it using reclaimed wood, and you know, uh, to feel as if it were an integral part of the the house or some you know slightly later period from the house um, that were put on, and then it has an addition which was put on that is clearly a modern addition and you know clearly a modern design um i'm not sure you can i'm not sure we can be quite that schizophrenic um you know with it i i would like to see one one or the other um you yeah. know and, and i would like the dividing line to be really significant you know in, in that case so i would you know you know concrete steel and glass or something like that mm -hmm. where it's really obvious i think it'd be gorgeous yeah, it could be. It could be beautiful. I, I, in fact, I had some sketches that I. Done I mean, especially I, with the view that you've got. I mean, if it's if you're, it, it then ha, it then has the effect of showcasing that old house, which is such an important house. It does. And when you do look at it from the back, which I don't know, I'm always in the cove with binoculars looking for eagles, so I, I guess I see this a lot. Um, then I think it's very clear. Yes, it's a, it's an addition, but but again, even we understand it. So that's just my, that's my personal read on the Department of Interior. Yeah, I certainly get the, uh, I certainly get the, the read on that. I think for us, you know, we, we bought into a historic community, you know, we, we like the aesthetic of the historic homes. 
Um, we agree that, you know, to some degree, it's a fiction here that we're creating mm -hmm. this, this L that probably would not have been- Would never have way. existed, ever. Well, and, and again, you know, I mean, you can look at Buzz's house. There is a Gambrel L off of his, his home. Um, so, I mean, there is some, there is some precedence even in the- Maybe not quite the size though. No, no, certainly the scale of this is bigger, um, but the scale of this is roughly the same scale as the, the edition that was put on. So we're not, we're not really extending this. What's the difference in the square footage between the two? Because it looked significantly bigger to the eye. And it main house is just under 1,000 square feet. It's like 970. And I'm not counting the little uh, southern mudroom that was probably not original. Um, and the addition is 682 square feet in footprint. What was the footprint? What's the footprint of the, so the new addition is 682 square feet? Yes. And the what footprint the, though, but- Replacing. Well, not, yeah. The full first floor addition is a net of 682, right. but the, the wing we're talking about with the gamble massing is, is uh, 480, I think. 490, is that per, 493. Per floor? Is that per floor? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the addition we're talking about is one half the size of the existing house first floor. It's and you can tell that from, you can tell that from the drawing. I think that part of the difficulty is that viewed dead straight from the back, you can see that it's only half as wide as the house. But mm -hmm. if you view it from the side, it looks like it's as it's long massive. as as the, as the house. And you're so, right, Doug. I agree. It, it, it hits you uh, in a very different way from the side than it does from the back. I, so what I'd I like us to change the screen over to the model so we can see this house in three dimensions. Sure. Uh, oh, the yeah, the five views that. are all deceptive. And, and let me tell you, my strategy on this design was to contrast the very plain, simple saltbox massing uh, with a highly articulated addition. And but using the same vocabulary of clapboards, trim boards, uh, precise window uh, proportions. So Let's to me, that's the contrast that I'm creating. It, and that's why we have the little dormers where the roof uh, heads break the eave line. Um, and, you know, there's multiple massings. So to me, that's the contrast I'm setting up. So there's no question that the 1655, whatever, 1665 house is not of the same vintage as the edition. Well, you yeah. know, I will, I'm sorry. I, Go ahead, Claire. I, I think it's fascinating to hear that sort of that intellectual underpinning. Um, mm -hmm. I think it takes a fairly sophisticated eye uh, to understand that. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of the public, especially the public who's gonna see it from the back, they may just read it as all the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's look at this. No, yeah. what I'm talking about, Maggie, is the actual model, the cardboard model. Oh, right. Cardboard. Yeah, oh. This, oh. Do we have photos from that? Yeah, you that's in the beginning of your packet. Photos. Mike, can you share your screen and pull those up? Yes. Sorry. I think, uh, do you have to make me the presenter? I think you can just hit the share button. Yeah, at the bottom, do you have the oh, share yeah, screen? Right. So I'm, I'm working off my uh, go to meeting. I'm not sure I can scroll through them though. There, there we go. So I have five or six shots. That's close to eye level from Hartford Avenue. Sure. The mud room is an identical footprint. A fundamental change is we're raising the floor level. Right now you walk into that mud room at ground level, you're two feet lower than the house elevation. And I'm bringing that floor level up and the, the whole new first floor will be on one level. This is an aerial, obviously, nobody will see that except the Hawks um, sweeping around to the south. The deck is existing fully from the south. Not a lot of people are going to get that view. 
Right. So I took this to show the dead on view from the street. You'll pretty much see what's there now, the original mudroom, original whatever vintage that is. And you'll just glimpse, in this case, the gamble. But either way, if we go to a gable, you'll still see a sliver of that. Uh, what I was going to say is that what when I acknowledged that from the side, it looked big uh, and less so from the back, dead straight. Um, yep. You know, it uh, to me, uh, I uh, I don't have as much problem with it uh, as I thought I did originally. Originally, I thought it looked kind of like a, I, and I don't want to say this in the pejorative, but like a uh, a, a clover farm shed attached to the back of a of a uh, salt box. That's when pretty pejorative. Well, <laughs> and and that's because it. So many it's getting of those, late. We're getting tired no, here. The punchiness but so, is going. <laughs> so many of those, so many of those sheds, you know, have the gamble roof to them. And I thought, you know, you're throwing it on the back of a salt box. But I have to say, these drawings uh, and these models show it at its best. And it's, it, I think that if you're going to put something on the back of the house. Uh, I'm a little bit more open to the gamble than I was at the beginning of the conversation. Um, it is true that Buzz Willard's house has a gamble off the back, um, but that gamble is uh, a lot higher on the ground. But another example of a gamble uh, off the back is uh, right next to the Budolf Williams house. Uh, there's uh, a uh, salt box uh, with a gamble off the back. Uh, with a first period design uh, language to it. So I, I'm, I'm more open to it here. I mean, it has, I, I'm overall more con less concerned about this than the garage, because I think this has less of an imposition on the district. Uh, that's where I am. I'm personally not married to the Gambrel, but I have to defer to my clients. Um, I, it, <laughs> in, in some remote way, I thought from a distance to the east, this might look like a barn behind the salt box. Right. You'd never have the depth perception to realize they're connected. Um, but I'm, I'm not wed to it. That uh, half moon window is going to disabuse you of any idea that it's <laughs> barn, though. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I agree from the, from the east perspective, it's really more the north and the south with the length, but um, yeah, yeah I, 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 don't, I don't love the gambrel. I, I think the join is a problem with the roof line, um, but you know, I'm not sure it's a deal breaker. I've already said I'd love to see co contemporary. I mean, I think that's a great look. So the uh, I'd have Palladian all window. glass so you could yeah. see out. I mean, well, I, that's, yeah, that's it'd, be I'd great. Want. it'd be great. It'd be great. All right, so I think there's a lot of food for thought tonight. Um, you know, I think maybe Kim will have some more ideas for you too um, as to what would be helpful going forward. Um, but I think we've got to move. We do have another applicant waiting and we're already at ten, the 10 o'clock hour now Poor after Mike. a pretty quick meeting. So unless anybody has anything else they want to share tonight about the project, I think we should probably jump to the next one. I just wanted to thank you guys for bringing all the tools, like, you know, having the 3D model helps, um, the drawings, you know, it all helps. So appreciate that, appreciate the efforts. Absolutely. Well, that certainly goes to our architects. I have to say, this, this has not been like a quick thought for us, either of these projects. We've spent years, we've worked with other architects we felt couldn't get it right. And uh, I mean, for us, I'm hearing your feedback and we need to make changes, but for us, I feel like both Tom and Mike got plans that we've been trying to resolve for quite some time. Understand and appreciate, uh, like I said, I, I'm feeling more comfort with the uh, house edition than I did on originally in part because you brought the designers with you and, uh, uh, and the tools that uh, Mark just met, referenced, uh, do show it in, in its most favorable light. Thank you. Uh, Kim, who do we have for 
the next two, four, five Main Street. Uh, Micah's here. And then after Micah, we have Doug um, for 30 Broad Street. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And we only have our Zoom is only allowing us to go until 1030. So. I'm going to be really quick. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Micah. Yeah. Thank you. First, first and foremost, I don't have like some weird Patriot podcast. I just, the flags, I, I always like the flag. So don't think anything from that. That's, <laughs> it's like not the, not the look, you know? Um, anyway, uh, that being said, uh, if you could give me, can I share the screen? Do I have the ability to? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now let's see what this is going to send me to. All right, so you guys are obviously familiar with 245 Main Street. It is the, um, it's the old Mason's Hall in the center of town. Many of us have been here for many other previous projects yep. that came, so we're very familiar. And I feel your pain because I looked through every single thing that's ever been proposed for this property down at the town uh, and numbed my mind doing so um so this is why i i you know and, and I'll, I'll do this i put the words right on there i made it straightforward but um basically we have um a concept that i'm trying to do first off i own boondoggle beers um which currently what i do is i contract brew the beer at other people's facilities and then i sell it to pack of stores and restaurants um, so I need to kind of change my business a little bit and I need to have a, um, you know, literally a brick and mortar presence. And this building's been one of my favorite properties forever. Um, I think since I moved to Weathersfield, which is what I think 12 years ago now, uh, I live at 553 Maple Street, the, you know, on, on the way south on Route 3 there. Um, <clears throat> which is a 200 year old house, but this is just from 1922. So we're not even quite a hundred years old on this. It's one of the youngest buildings in the historic area there. Um, I'm trying to do the bare minimum to get this to go forward because history has shown me that there's been nothing in this building since the whalers were in town. So somebody has to do something and it might as well be me. And I'm using a concept we call minimally viable product. I'm going to do the absolute minimum. And that is, if you see it, it's pretty much going to look the same when I'm done with it. <laughs> uh, that's the goal. So obviously the inside is gutted. There's all sorts of stuff like that. So the inside is where all the work's going to happen. I got to bring it up to code. I got to add heat, you know, things that you just need. Uh, but for the outside here, um, I have one real big sticking issue that I need to resolve and that's ADA compliance. So in order to make that work, you know, most folks uh, in the past have proposed ramps on the side of this building and that side being on the church street side facing the village pizza. Um, I, my mom was in a wheelchair for a lot of my life and I find that to be a little bit inhumane. It embarrassed me to have to push my mom through a side door or a back door of a business and I don't think that we should be doing that. So my solution, which I think is fairly elegant, if I do say so myself, is that I took, here's the current view and this is the future view. Yep, I just widened it a little bit. And where I widen it, I put this lift in and you can see that I have uh, this is the extended um, stoop and the lift fits in here kind of snug behind the pillars. Um, That's great. Yep. I, it, it, it seems to be a pretty egalitarian wow. look. And as you can see here, I have it visualized to some degree. And again, this is just me, not an artist fritzing around with um, you know, MS paint. <laughs> so <clears throat> my architect will do all the better work. Um, I'm between architects because, because Mike is retiring from the last presentation. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my lift, my lift will just basically be, it's a public lift commercial grade ADA specs and put on a slab 
tucked in behind there. Um, I, I think there might need to be some lighting changes in terms of material. Um, everything is the same. So we're talking about um, these are wooden columns. I intend to use the same columns. I, I inspected them. They're in good shape. The, the um, There's some rot near them, but they look like I can fix them up pretty good. Just sand them down and paint them. Um, I'm not planning on replacing any of the windows. I plan on just repairing what I, what I need to repair. Part of this project for me, it has to look almost like the old building that it is. Like when my customers come in, I want it to look sort of, you know, like the abandoned old building that it is. Um, over time, I will come back in front of you guys about another dozen times to do the upgrades that I intend to do for the functionality of my business. Um, <clears throat> but this is all I intend to come and propose to you in two weeks. Um, so if you want, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on this concept at first, and then I can go into the other things. Um, I've got some more things to show you, then I'll, and I'll be again quick with that. So it's amazing that you're going to make so few changes. It's wonderful to hear that you're not going to replace the windows. I love the concept of lift instead of a ramp. That's all great. I have one question. You said you want to have a brick and mortar presence, but what will the business be? Not that that affects us. I'm just curious. I live oh, down the street. Oh, no. So so it's a brewery. Um, okay. Yeah. So what, what people come in? Yeah, I live yeah, down the street, yeah. so I'm just curious. It's good. Yeah, and I can't. And, and if for any concerns regarding uh, appropriateness and what have you, um, it's it's actually funny because this isn't really even what I would call a brewery. It is um, for legal purposes. I need to have um, the ability to produce something. I think it's like 1,500 gallons of beer a year with my brewing, in order to be qualified as a brewery in the state of Connecticut. Um, I will. I'll be north of that, but <laughs> I'm not going to make a lot of beer here. There's an eight foot ceiling in that basement. And if you've ever been to a brewery, you know, they need really tall ceilings. And yeah, so this long term is actually going to be for me an auxiliary site. But it also it's to me, it's more than that, because it's, you know, it's the center of town. It's the most visible building in town. It is a place of gathering. It has been since it was built. I want to bring it back to be a place of gathering and you know, add that additional life um, back to the property. It, it, we have no control over what it is. I was just personally yeah. curious. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer. I got, I got nothing to hide here because, you know, breweries have become something that, you know, they're, they're effectively just a, a variation of a restaurant, right? So um, to give further info, I'm trying to, for food, I need to have food in there because of the current um, laws. And so I'm gonna actually go I, I don't exactly know what I'll be doing for food, but it probably along the lines of uh, some kind of deli with panini presses. I don't want to have to install a full commercial kitchen and big blower vents and all that rigmarole. It's just, and, and there's already pizza next door, you know, <laughs> there's, there's restaurants. And I'm not looking to try to be a com competitor to my, my neighbors. I'll be trying to, you know, help them in some ways. Um, I think uh, what's I think what's great is that what you're talking about is really sympathetic to the building we have when it comes to design uh, and uh, when it comes to use uh, is something really uh, that uh, would fit as well. Uh, we don't regulate the latter, we regulate the former, uh, but the most important thing is you seem to have the right attitude uh, to be able to make this a success. So it sounds like you'd be a really uh, uh, interesting uh, and exciting uh, ap applicant. So yeah. thank you. You, you, really may, you may know me from the tree lighting beer tent. I run that. So uh -huh. <laughs> I really love the idea of the lift instead of the massive ramp on the side of the building. That was always something that we struggled with on prior. Um, I think you're probably going to need an elevator on the back of the building at some point. No. No. Okay. Um, that, that was something I just to let you know if for functionality you do need that that was something that was actually less of a problem for us to make the building usable for other people that was never where we got hung up um, on previous applications we will want to see details of your sign um, yeah I, that's why I just I just pasted my logo there for yeah. you know giggles because I'll have some sign I, I I mean that's my logo so you have a context of the the logo 
Um, but I, I'm assuming I will endeavor to make it look, um, you know, in 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 trappings of the the center, you know, a wood sign. I, I know the deal. I come from a 400 year old town, and I live in a 400 year old town, so it'll be very Weathersfield. I'll put an onion on it. I got gotcha. you, we and you'll see we that in two so, weeks. We were so excited to hear you were coming in. So welcome, and I hope that the sale and what renovations you're doing go very smoothly. We well, we, we already, we talked about the numbers that we're on the same page there. So for me, it's just a matter of uh, getting through the zoning and, uh, you know, I guess paying for it. You know, that's always got to happen, <laughs> right? Uh, but so if you- Hey, if Mike, a quick question uh, for you. So yes, sir. Just to, to rehash, if I could. So you're at existing windows that a lot of them are smashed. You're gonna mm -hmm. repair those. Uh, any of the doors or any other side door, I mean, you're going to do what you have to do to make I'm going to do good. what I have to do. If yeah. I have to change any of those, I'm going to have to come back to you guys, right. obviously. Um, so and I understand that you guys like the Harvey majesties, et cetera, and but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Now the other thing I got to ask you, you, maybe I misheard you, but you said you, cause you almost did like a magic trick here. You said, well, you know, I love the lift. Cause that was a huge struggle. Where do you put that ADA mm -hmm. ramp in? And, and, and I like your explanation and the lift's a home run. You said you're widening something. Did, did I miss? Oh, yes, the portico. Can so you go back you, to that. Yeah. So, boop, boop. All right. So you're just widening it. But so that means you are going to do some concrete work or, yes. or what? So the, the key the key aspect of this widening is that I need to actually the the you could have uh, space on the landing. Yeah. The landing itself is actually one step too low. The interior of the floor inside is eight inches above the top step. Yeah. The steps in this are six inch steps, one foot deep. So I'm gonna have to re-pour all the steps as well. So it it it's it's going to be an opportunity to change it a little bit. I'm I'm going to use the same railings. I'm going to have to find somebody that can um, refurbish them for my purposes. But they have the cool little Masons logo built into them, and I'm like, that's got to stay with the building, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, so the whole thing's got to be widened in order to make for that ramp. Um, and I actually have, if I switch, oh yeah, see, I was following along. Um, that's not what I want to show you though. Uh, right. So he, this is the actual um, architect version. So um, it's in, it's a work in progress, as you can tell. But it what it does is it's redrawn here. It's exactly the right width. I think the one I did before wasn't quite wide enough. But this is this is the full width that would need to need to be there to put the lift in without honestly jackhammering what's there. And I think the problem is with these, you know, this Mason Hall is built like a tank. So I don't want to jackhammer concrete because I have no idea. Like it's, this thing is so solid. It'll take me forever to chip that out. It'll never look good. So I'll just adding to it. I think it actually be, if people are away for a couple of weeks and you redo it, they won't even notice the size change. That was my thought as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, welcome. Very, very. As Claire said, she's walking distance. I'm stumbling distance, so I can uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. That's standing. That's. I, I expect your mug club membership now. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, just if if we're if anyone wants to kind of this is the end of the portico in the front. Uh, I'd like to kind of address a few other things briefly, if it's okay. Sure. Sure. Um, and these are because I'm going to eventually do these things, right? So I just know in order to open, I need to do this, right? So this, the things of concerns that I've found is the fire escape is no longer up to code. It will not be recertified. Um, it is over top of windows. And that's really not how you want to escape a burning building is with fire coming up underneath of you. So at some point, I'm going to be back <laughs> to try to do a new fire escape on the same side, but just pushed a little bit back. So it's not over the windows. Um, what do you guys feel about that? <laughs> like, you know, that's a utilitarian item that is necessary. There's yeah. an ugly one there now. It's a commercial building. So of course you're going to have a fire escape. I feel, I think the same. In fact, I, I think yeah. it fits the aesthetic. If I were you, I'd want that. It's kind of fits that industrial aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. So the, I don't know if if the town will allow me metal. The, the fire chief specifically mentioned that what um, 
would work is to build it out of wood. Um, so that is some concern. It would still be open. What's that uh, Lucky Lou's right now? They have one in the back. Is I that don't, metal? I, mean, I, I know they have know. the ground. Yeah, that. Yeah, so what's there, in, in, just in my conversations with the, the fire chief is, is, excuse me, I guess he's the fire marshal in this marshal. context, but he's the chief, <laughs> is that the this, the, a traditional fire scape that folds down that, you know, the lever type, which this is, is the problem because when you're rushing out of a building, they, you know, nobody knows how to operate a fire escape. They've never done it. You've, none of us have ever done it. And if a fire breaks out up there, who's going to be the person to put the steps down so they want something that's permanent and therefore it's a self-sustained suspended um stairs of some sort out there so basically they don't want the town isn't really keen on those lever type ones but i mean i'm open to whatever the heck you guys want i mean that's my thought is i don't i don't have a good idea what fits there we don't so. have a lot of opportunity to review fire escapes. So Yay. well, if you, if you could experience for all of us, um, you know, I'm personally, I think it'd be great to have an old school metal fire escape that you had to, you know, like you see in the movies where they pull on it and pull it down. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. You know, I, don't I, I guess there's it. some safety issues with those though. The, you know, that, that was back before, you know, every other person was a lawyer, I think. And that's why, <laughs> they were popular back in the day and they're you don't see them going up too often anymore they always do the interior stairs etc with fire rating well certainly you know when you get some ideas like i said we don't review fire escapes very often and i don't think i've ever looked at one okay. um, on an application so send some ideas into kim and you know we're she'll we're pass open. them around yeah we're open to it good deal i'll do that well i mean i'm not proposing anything in two weeks on that so it's it's a sort of moot it's just if you have any direction but i'm hearing that you kind of like the the old black metal fire escape and i kind of do too so that's good that's what's on the back of lucky lose is it yeah good. it is yeah it could be it's probably brown oh so aesthetically speaking if i change the color of anything no it's just that matches their trim no, no whatever oh no that's what i'm just saying specifically because i know you guys deal with aesthetics is if i do change the color of anything um it would be black i i i actually think this building would look a lot better with black trim than the white trim and the white windows it's and the white uh cornice i think the whole thing would be better in black but i'm not going there yet so <laughs> I would, uh, I mean, uh, I think that, yeah. I mean, if it's paint uh, on a natural surface, you probably have uh, uh, room to do what you want. But I will tell you, you have a lot of buildings right around you there uh, that are brick with white trim on the opposite corner. And one of the most attractive things about that building is it kind of uh, reads as part of uh a center of town that uh, is all from that same era uh i don't think the masonic uh temple uh, would read the same way with black a good example would be if you go down to the corner of gordon uh, of of maine and garden uh the little dentist office uh, that had uh is a brick building and was turned into a residence that building went completely from white trim to black trim and black windows. And I, I just think it's a bit too much. And that's on a small building. Uh, I think it would really yeah, I, dark. I would bring, I would bring images if I ever come to propose that. So you, well, you would like you'd I have said, an opportunity at that time to decide if it looks better because I'll have it in white and black, you know, I'll give you guys the choice if we get there, you know. I, like I said, it may be that if you're just painting what you have, you wouldn't be coming to us at all. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I'm sharing it now. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a really exciting uh, prospect and I'm sure that uh, everyone's mind will be uh, as uh, open as it's supposed to be. Cool. Good. Any other changes you need to run by us? I didn't realize we had a third person. Yeah, I'll be, tonight. The, only, the very last thing is, um, fencing i i have been told and i just I, this is why i had google maps up sorry um I, i'm disoriented that's what i am yeah
So we have neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. I went and talked to the neighbors. They're lovely people. I want to build them a fence. In terms of this area here, um, you can see my cursor, correct? Uh, no. You're still showing the original building. Oh, uh, I guess I have to select a different. Share. Yeah, unshare and then share again. There you go. Yep. Sorry about that. So this is obviously, uh, you know, Google Earth view, but we have these neighbors over here. And, you know, while, while they are in the center of the business district and they're totally get that, I still, for me to be a, the best neighbor I can, I want to build them a fence. And they are agreeable, agreeable to that. But I don't, you know, the commission, when I read your, um, your uh, guidelines, your Got, uh, there, you know, you, your fences are either picket or raw iron are the preferences. Um, in the context of this, the goal would be to kind of give them some privacy. Um, and so I don't think either of those fence styles would be ideal. And I wanted to just kind of bring with you, and I don't know if this, uh, can you see that? Yes. All right. So this is a privacy screen I built at my house and it has um, major wheeler honeysuckle growing on it. And I would probably replicate that almost precisely. It's a really, you know, nice green wall with wood accents and red flowers that flower all year. Well, except for in February. You could actually put a real fence too. You know, if you wanted to put a solid six or eight foot fence in the back there, that's probably not going to be a problem. I will say eight feet, you're going to have to get a permit um, yeah. to go eight feet. Yeah, I, I saw anything it's above six. six is a permit, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you'd so, probably have to tear it down too by the, uh, you know, have lower four feet by the driveway, you know, as it gets yeah, to the road. So yeah, 50% yeah. open at the front part. It's, it's right. a number, it's a setback from the sidewalk. Right. But yeah. the commission doesn't have an issue with that is I guess no, so that I just no. deal with zoning don't bring there. Us vinyl. <laughs> oh, heck no. No, there will never be vinyl. I hate plastic. It will come before the commission, but we're relatively open on this. Okay. Good deal. Um, so I, I'll, I'll I, try don't to cut, I don't want to cut you short, but I think we lose our connection at 1030 yep, and we've got I'm done. another guy. I'm okay. done anyway, so thank you. All right. Thank you so much for coming thank in. You. We're, really We're very excited. Very, yeah. Cool. Thank I'll you. see you guys in two weeks. Great. Perfect. Good luck. Thanks. Kim, are you still with us? I'm here. I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of his screen. <laughs> oh, he's got to do that, I think. Can you dump him from the meeting? There you go. Hi, Doug Elliott. We're sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> you have to tell um, Kim. Un okay. Thanks for hanging in with me. Um, and I hope this is a while before an Elliot is back in front of you. Um, I didn't <laughs> plan on coming back in front of you this soon. Um, last week, my wife and I were ripping up carpets, sat down to have a beer to look at our new stairs, and then we had water coming down our kitchen. So we are going to be putting a new roof. Um, I'll just I'll share my screen now. Um, obviously, we know which ones are able to be approved, but we were wondering if the commission would be available or open to adding this metal standing seam roof on our front porch. Um, and I wanted to bring it to you guys, you know, as soon as possible, just because this would kind of hinder who we select as our contractor, because, you know, if it's just architectural shingles, you know, it would kind of change that. So here's my quick Photoshop I pulled together. Um, we'll be changing the roof to a charcoal, so it'll be much darker um, to kind of match our, our black shutters we've got in there. I did do a little bit of research on other four squares that kind of have this look to give you kind of an idea. Um, and these are the one, obviously some of these are more coastal, some of them are a little bit more modern, but just quickly going through these just to show you ones that are out there. And I think this will be kind of in my package. Mooresville is a really lovely town. I've been there. It's near where my grandpa, well, my grandmother now lives. And it, yeah, it's very artsy, great kind of area. Yeah, it's great. And then this was pulled off of one of the contractor sites we looked at. I just wanted to show you, it is, it will be a map lack, supposed to kind of give like an aged tin roof. We didn't want to do copper with our yellow house. Um, so we're trying to reduce the shine. I know that's you know, one of the points that you'll be asking about. Um, these are actual photos. And I really just wanted to, 
see if the committee would be open to that. Um, because if not, you know, I'll just move forward with, you know, our architectural shingles in black. But, you know, it's something that we were thinking about a long time. And then it was thrust to the forefront of our conversation um, with some water coming in. So, Doug, there is uh, right down the street from you uh, a porch with a standing seam like that in copper. Um, on uh, Middletown Avenue, if you haven't noticed it already, uh, perhaps you have, uh, but we have approved that sort of thing uh, right in that neighborhood. Um, okay, I so. didn't notice that one. I noticed the one on the Realty office on Hartford Ave, and then obviously the silver one on Comstock, which is a little bit different scale than this, but I did it's not notice about, that one. It's about six houses down on the right, um, of south of the foot monument, so. Um, there's a, a house there with asphalt shingles on the roof up at the second story, above the second story. And at the same height where this uh, porch is, uh, there's standing scene. Okay, good. So, you know, I have, I'll be honest with you, when Kim first said you were coming in with a metal roof, I thought on a four square, but I didn't understand that it was only on that front porch. And I think it actually looks kind of nice. I'm intrigued. Okay. Yeah, I think I originally was thinking we've got two bay windows and, you know, we're thinking about those. So I can't stop share and start share again. Um, so if I can weigh in on uh, standing seam metal roofs. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm, I have the same situation that you have, where I had a porch with standing seam metal roof. I had to replace it. I looked into the snap together ones, which I suspect is what you're looking at and decided to go with copper. And the reason being is all the snap together ones on a hip roof, the ridge tends to be very, very prominent. And, In terms of the, the ridge cap on it? Yep. And with, with a copper roof, you can avoid that. Uh, the upside is with the copper roof is you have to deal with shiny for one year and then it turns a nice brown. So it's something to keep in mind. And yeah. when I had mine done, I did not find that the cost was prohibitive by any means. Okay. So the cost between copper and the snap together was not a huge difference. Okay, good to know. Yeah, we're, we're in that process. We've got a couple of codes so far. Um, and I've got kind of everybody on hold just because I didn't want to move forward with anybody, obviously, if, you know, which direction we could go, so. Yeah, if you want to reach out to Kim, she can give you my contact information if you want to know who I use, but. Okay, yeah, great, yeah. I think, you're, I think you're sensing no resistance is what okay. I'm saying. Yep, I like the and one. Thank you, and, and, and I, we're scrambling and Kim's been very helpful getting me for the next meeting um, just because We've got as much sealed off as we can for now, but it is over our kitchen and yeah. sounds like the kitchen's next. So I was planning on doing five years later with the kitchen, but you know, <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> Best laid plans. Thanks for coming <laughs> in though. We really appreciate it. No, I appreciate you hanging on with me. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Kim, thank do, you. Kim, do we have anything else? No, I just took on water though. Um, uh no report, no correspondence. No report, nothing. Great. Yeah. Um, in that case, folks, thank you for hanging in so late. <coughs> the the office gotcha. director from gotcha. last week, um, but I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank Good you. night, y'all. Good night. Bye.